Welcome back to another episode of The Petty Reality. I'm Amber. And I'm Jerry. Uh, and we're having uh, a fucking day. We're having a fucking day. She we have has been, been trying to record for an hour and a half. And it has been all my fault. As you can see, my, my mic is missing. <laughs> Um, hopefully my skin looks a little better because I got a new laptop. Whoop, whoop. Um, I started out with red wine. It tasted like garbage. So I switched back to my reliable white. I've been on tequila, y'all. And so. he's been drinking tequila. So y'all are in for a treat tonight. <laughs> needless I mean, we'll to see. say, needless to say, this week. You know, we've had some doozies of week. We have. But I think this week, at least for me personally, it has me. been. It, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Your mic okay? Hmm? Okay. I'm just so anyways, I love how we both just had such a shitty week. Usually I jump in and I'm like, how was your week? But I'm like, no, I'm talking first because I had a shitty week too. <laughs> it's just been kidding. a fucking week. It I has. actually had a good week until <clears throat> today. And today I did that thing where I woke up and I was like, it's going to be a good day. <laughs> the birds are chirping. Spring is here. And life said, nope. <laughs> Joke's on you, bitch. I literally... <laughs> Because I was even, I was like, I got to get off work early because I had a doctor's appointment. I had to go get my skin checked because I'm white and I get skin cancer. Needless to say, that turned out to be a pain in the ass, literally. So, like, my ass hurts. Because <laughs> they had to biopsy something on my ass cheek. Oh, God. And the numbness is wearing off, so I'm trying to... Self-medicate. Self-medicate, yeah. Um, <laughs> but then also we get on here to record, and I'm like, you know what? It's fine. We're going to record. We're going to have a good time. And then Jerry's like, your microphone feed is god awful. So I'm like, like, it sounds like you're at the ocean. Yeah. And I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to do that. So I'm like, is it my laptop? Is it my thing? I got a new laptop, but I didn't set it up yet. So here we are an hour and a half later. Maybe with a little buzz. (laughs) It's been a good, it's been a good time. Yeah. Anyways, Uh, that was my week. Do you want to elaborate about your week at all? Or do you want to plead the fifth? All I'm going to say is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I was going to say to those. That's that's all I've got to say. Those who watch the Love is Blind reunion. I was going to be like, okay, Trevor. Because Trevor got in the hot seat. They confronted him because apparently he, uh, you know, let's just jump into it because I have that up on my top. I watched the reunion Wednesday night for all you love is blind peeps. And I know Jerry's like, what? Wait, did you finish watching? Because you started. Okay. Okay. Y'all. How far did you get? Because you were texting me like, so-and-so's cute. So-and-so's crazy. How far did you get? It's on Netflix, we said. Yeah. Yes. I'll tell you exactly how far I got. It's either going to be really not far or super far. Okay, so episode one. Netflix says I have 39 minutes left in that episode. So you barely watched it. I won. It's okay. Okay, It's over now. So I I am going to continue watching it because the pod thing, the whole talking to a wall. The pods or, is not my favorite. It's it's once they form and, and pick who they want and they go out into the real world, that's when it gets good. The pods I could almost fast forward through. It's cringy to me. It is. It's a little cringy. And our friend Heather was like, she was like, just get. She was like, it's like two episodes. You just get to the side. Heather likes Love is Blind? Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't wait to talk to her about it in a couple oh, weeks. Oh, yeah. Oh, I oh, can't yeah. wait. Okay. Um, well, anyway, I, so you made it 20 it, minutes, 30 minutes? Yeah. Well, no, it's like I mean, an hour and a half episode, so you made it a little yeah. bit. Okay. 
I need to, I, I live in Charlotte for all of y'all. I live in Charlotte, so I feel like I need to watch it to like support and make fun of these people. Um, support but and make fun of. I support you while I make fun of you. It's it's what friendship is, right? Yeah. Right? I don't I don't know. I'm here for hearing what you've got to say about Love Is Blind because, um, you at least from last week alone. You were looking up like who is who, yes. you know, like what they look like. You at least know that much. Yes. Okay. Well, the reunion was Wednesday at 9 p.m. sharp, Eastern Standard Time. So I, I'm i talking 8.59, had my finger on the button ready to press start. Like I was red D. But you reminded me of Trevor because Trevor was the one that Chelsea did not pick. Right. He was very into it, and everyone was Team Trevor, Teddy Bear Trevor. Come to find out, some text messages got leaked between him and his girlfriend. Um, okay, so, okay, rabbit hole. How the uh-huh. fuck, how the fuck do they get on the show? How did the producers not vet them? Do you have a girlfriend? Do you have a wife? Are you in and a current relationship? And he probably said no. He even tried to play it off on the show. So when they asked him about it, because they were like, we've got the receipts. They showed the screen of the text messages and they even read it verbatim out loud to the crowd. Oh, yes. Uh, They said, Trevor, what do you have to say for yourself? Because you came on the show and told us you were single, that you were looking for love, that you were here for it. And he literally just was like. Had nothing to fucking say. Just crickets. What? Uh, But see, here's my thing, okay? These producers need to do a better job because how the fuck did you not stalk his, like, how did you not do, like, a good background check? How did you not stalk his social media? Well, I don't know. Do they? Because it doesn't. No, I don't think they stalk their social medias, but they do background checks, like criminal background checks. They do, I, I don't know. They do several things. To make sure that they're not just bringing on a serial killer. Somehow Jeremy slicked past that. Because he is a fucking serial killer. Um, but yeah. So I don't I don't know. But apparently he had a girlfriend. And what was weird. Extra weird to me about it. Was like their text messages between each other. Was okay. that she was very aware. That he was going to film this show. Fucking stop. No I'm serious. Their messages was, okay, I just landed. And she said, okay, good luck on the show. I miss you, baby. And he was like, I miss you too. And then when he got done, he got his phone back and was like, oh my gosh, I missed you so much. And she's like, oh, pump. She was like, pumpkin, I miss you. Like, why would you There's be this- in a relationship with someone and then have them go? Well, it sounds that was like- weird. So who leaked this? Who leaked the? That is a great question. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody uh, somewhere did. It had to have been her. Like who else would have had access to that? Unless the producers Maybe. went through his phone. Or the, I don't know, but they got leaked somehow, and we did not know as a public until the reunion. And the reunion, they put it on the screen and was like, "What do you have to say for yourself?" And he was like, "Uh, he literally, he's like, I have nothing to say. I don't know." He at first tried to play it off like, oh, she was toxic for me. Like, I wanted to give this a shot and see if I met somebody better. And it's like, what the fuck, dude? Because when he got back and got his phone back and said, hey, I'm I'm done with the show. He was like, I want to marry you. So it's like, how fucking toxic is she if you want to marry this girl? It just. Okay, so. The producers, I will say, they sound like how I deal with my wonderful toxic bosses and i'm like i feel like your wonderful toxic bosses (laughs) they're wonderfully toxic yeah i'm always like oh but here's the receipt of what you said Uh uh-huh but i have proof they are very bravo-esque i will say yeah they put receipts up on the big screen so everyone can see it they confront people. They replay uh, back because there was claims that somebody said, okay, so the Matthew guy, the creep I was telling you about. The, the guy that would like get up and walk out immediately. When oh, he, like, yeah. Said, okay. Well, Tell he me fell more. in love. He fell in love with two girls. 
And okay, so one was AD, the girl that ended up with Clay. Yes. And the other was the Sarah. I like. I keep wanting to call her Sarah Lee, <laughs> like the bread or the baker. <laughs> her name is Sarah Ann. It was between AD and Sarah Ann, and. He told both of them exactly the same thing. Like, I've never met a girl like you before. Um, I refuse to (laughs) leave here without asking your dad's permission. Let's run away together. Up until today, I didn't know who I was going to pick, but now I know. Like, it line for line said the same thing to both girls. And ended up going home alone. So, love that that worked for him. And he didn't show up to the reunion. He wouldn't. Of course he wouldn't. They said he. They said they extended the offer for him to show up on the reunion, and he declined. And I'm like, of course he fucking did, because yeah, cameras don't lie. So yeah, Matthew, I have decided, um, just like Jeremy is also a serial killer. I'm I'm fully convinced. He told those girls, let's run away together. Like I'm talking like leave the show together, not make it to the altar and do the show. It was like, hey, let's just leave now. He without looks- the cameras. He looks very um serial killer uh, vibes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, him and Jeremy both serial killers. You can't convince yeah. me otherwise. Also, Jeremy is confirmed garbage. We all know that like editing, they can edit conversations, they can edit viewpoints, they can make anything, they can make anybody look like anything if they want to. We right. know this by Bravo and Housewives. Mm-hmm. So Jeremy, it was like he was giving douche vibes. He seemed like garbage, but it made you wonder how much of it was editing. It's not and, edited. Uh, it's not. It's confirmed. Him and Sarah Ann deserve each other. They're both garbage. Um, I texted you about one of them. Do you remember Matthew. who? No, the girls. I had texted you and I was like, this girl annoys the shit out of me. Oh, girl? I'm going back. Ooh, are you? Okay, because I don't remember. Um. Uh, oh, Chelsea. Is that who it was? The one that was supposedly looked like Megan Fox. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, you said she annoyed the shit out of you. I'm pretty sure it was Chelsea. Ugh. Who, like I said, might look like Megan Fox. I said. Only. I said OMFG. Chelsea is annoying AF. Yes. She is. All of, she's that all she's that it. girl that oh, I love you. Oh. Okay, so I I may go. I'm this is probably going to be unpopular opinion, especially if you live here in Charlotte. I just feel like the people that they've portrayed on this show is not a good representation of like Charlotte as a whole. <laughs> this is South end fuck boy, South end fuck girl status. Clearly. They're not a good representation of what Charlotte is as a whole. Charlotte is a lot, but we could say that about any city if we're being honest. But like, what the? Isn't that the catchphrase of like the the city? Charlotte's got a lot. Oh, I don't know. I'm not that. I think invested. it is. I've seen commercials. <laughs> I am not that invested. Like, I enjoy <laughs> okay. living here more than other places. Yeah. But I'm not that invested. Okay. Um, well. Anyway, so back to the reunion. Sorry, y'all. I, back to the reunion. It's okay. You're like, I want it to be very fucking clear. That I that do not is agree. not me. <laughs> I did ah. not sign off on that. Um, Clay, the one that turned down AD. And we're all like, why? That he I was knew. afraid of cheating? Yes. So the whole time I watched it, I kept thinking, man, this guy talks a lot. Like every clip of him and AD was him talking and her just kind of being like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was like, fuck, this guy talks a lot. On the reunion, he gives car salesmen. Oh. And then I saw a TikTok that said, so he has his own like, uh, I don't know if it's like water sports or something, but he has his own business in Charlotte with like jet skis. And somebody was saying that he didn't even come on the show for legitimate reasons, that he was there to promote his business. I don't know how true that is. That's that's a TikToker theory. So, but I... it checks out because he gives car salesmen. He talks too much. 
and poor AD just got her heart broke in the middle of it all. I wanted them to work so bad, but he just like cannot get away from the fact that his dad used to cheat on his mom. And so he thinks he's going to cheat, but it's like, then just why show up on a show where you're going to marry somebody you just met. If you think that you're a cheater. So the theory sticks that he was there to promote something. That's what people are saying. Here's the other thing. If that's your mentality, one, you, I, I think I said this last episode. If you have that mentality of, oh, I'm afraid I'm going to cheat, I'm going to cheat. First of all, don't go looking for res- relationships because yeah, you're looking for somebody to break their heart if that's what you really feel. One and Which two, <laughs> there's these things called therapists that will help you work through that childhood well, trauma. He claims he's in therapy now. No, the fuck he isn't. Trying to be a better man so he can get AD back. We'll see. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then also Brittany and Kenneth. That's a whole rabbit hole I meant to go down, and I did not because I had shit going on this week. But they showed up on the reunion. I wanted them to work. And they are friends. They talk every day. They love each other, but they're not in a relationship. And I saw a TikTok theory that he's gay. But then again, why go on a show like this? There's gay dating shows to go on. Like, why would you go on a Love is Blind where it's a... So he's a middle school teacher, a principal. middle school principal. Yes. And so, I think like a youth pastor at his church or something. But somebody said something about him being gay. I don't I don't know. Either way, that just kind of made me sad that they didn't work out because I feel like so they were so cute together. So let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. So and you might not know this, but. With Housewives and some of the other shows we watch, production, when you sign the contract to do said show, if it's Housewives or whatever, part of it is showing up for the reunion. But I also know there's a kickback to, like, at least for Housewives that – Production usually picks up the tab for like dinner and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, for sure. But so what's the catch with this? Does production not do that? And are they not required? Like, obviously, the goal is to find love. You they're not really on a game show, but. But they are. I don't know. Like, it's really weird. Like, why wouldn't you require them to show up for the reunion? But I guess if there's no monetary subsidiary like any kind of no like but kickback. there is there is money involved because i discovered that apparently if you agree to marry somebody and you become engaged if if you guys stop the engagement and don't make it to the altar there's like a fine you have to pay so i'm thinking maybe there's a fine that you have to pay if you don't come to the reunion oh maybe so, so does, like, they get reimbursed so much money for being on the show, but then if they decide to not do the reunion or they decide to not fully commit to the altar, there's, like, a penalty taken out of it. I bet so that's if, how that works. So if you turn out to be a piece of shit like most of these people have, um, there's a – I didn't providing... even tell you that, T. Do you know how – So for the first time ever, from what I understand, I could be wrong, but I think this is the first time ever. This is the sixth season. Five couples made it as far as getting engaged. Apparently six couples got engaged. But one of them, they filmed all this stuff, filmed her getting her wedding dress, even filmed the wedding itself. The guy apparently had some kind of mental health stuff going on and basically threatened suicide if they aired any of his footage. So they had to go back. I know the girl. I can't remember the guy's name. Um, Uh Because the girl, and I thought it was weird because the girl kept showing up to be part of, like, group things. Like, the wedding dress. Like, picking out the wedding dress. But I'm like, Mm -hmm. is she there as a friend? Because she's not there. Oh, God. She's blonde. um... She's real cute. Um, 
Not Ashley. She's you can Google it. But like basically her and this guy got engaged and I guess it didn't work out. And he threatened that he said, Laura? I will kill myself. No, not it, Laura. No. Okay. Um, if you air any of my footage. And so they had to go back and edit all of their scenes out of it and pretend like they never, like it never happened. Uh, I'd have to see a picture. Either way, I that sounds like he had some skeletons in his closet that he didn't want. Coming yeah. Out. I think there was um some, uh, not abuse allegations, but like maybe prior abuse allegations. Like he's not mentally well. So how mm. he passed all these screenings to get on the show is another question. But yeah, I learned about that too. Cause I kept seeing her and I kept thinking like, why is she here? I just thought maybe her and one of the girls formed like a BFF bond and she just wanted to be part of her journey. I don't know. But yeah, they had to go back and edit all that out. So all in all, it was a great reunion. I yeah. loved, they brought back a lot of the older couples to see like, oh, they were really? still married. Yeah. Uh, two of them are pregnant. They, it was really cute how they did it. Um, but it was a good reunion. Like I said, anything that came out from the time they finished airing it to the reunion, like all these receipts of text messages or bullshit, like they were like, roll the tapes and like addressed it to the group. It was awesome. Maybe I need, I, I need to reunion. commit to it. I need you to should. commit to it. Get through the pods. It's hard. Just get through it. Um, Honestly, just... you already know the couples. Just skip forward to where they go to the paradise, their little honeymoon thing. To see if the physical connection's there, start there and go, and you'll you'll get okay. addicted. Okay, so that's like I want to say episode four or five. It should tell so, you. So, episode four is the hardest decision of my life, and then episode five is she lied to me. So, tensions are sweet when two participants fall in love with the same person. Yeah. So, okay, I'll st I'll skip yeah, ahead find and go to wherever it is where they all go on vacation together. Because that's where they try to see is the physical there, but also they meet up with each other. So all the love triangles come out the woodwork. It's oh, mm -hmm. that's where it gets real juicy. Sipping that tea. Uh huh. Wow. Um, but anyways, you want to start with below deck now that I got my love is blind out of the way. <laughs> so i I actually enjoyed this episode. I've enjoyed all of them, but this one, I expected these guests to turn out to be complete like talks. real assholes, yeah, like, but it was going that direction, but I think, like, so last episode, they were like Eileen or whoever she was. She made the comment to Jared that he was only he only had looks on his side. Eileen. But I think what happened is when her ass fell out of the hot tub, <laughs> it knocked some fucking sense into her. Because did you <laughs> notice? I was like, this bitch learned her lesson. She she was like, that's what I get for being a fucking cunt. Dude, it knocked she, her down a few pegs. It sure did. did. Because when they were all playing um, volleyball, her friend was like, hey, do you want to drink? She was like, actually, I'm good right now. I'm like, yeah, you are, bitch. I was bitch. proud of her. I was like, okay. <laughs> And the crew, Carrie was like, um, everybody was like, we just need to like low key, like he she was like pacing Keep her own self. Her. Yeah. yeah. She was like, I'm not I'm I'm not about this life of like I'm surprised <laughs> she didn't have a black eye. Dude, the fact that she shows up to play volleyball the next day after getting that blackout drunk and hitting your fucking head on a hot tub. She went down hard. She must have got up and ate all the pancakes, oh. soaked up that alcohol, and took all the ibuprofen and said, girl, let's let's play some volleyball. <laughs> Sir. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> what uh. hangover? Sir. <laughs> You're going down. <laughs> She did. She rallied it when they said, you want a drink? She's like, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm or I think she said, I'll have some water or something. I was like, okay, Eileen. I see what I you see did you. there. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, man. But yeah. That was good. So I'm also Barbie. I know I was like real iffy on her. You and uh, <clears throat> what's his name? Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh, the the chief stew. What's his name? Oh, Fraser. Fraser. 
I was going to say, you and Fraser both. It's like one minute you're like, okay, Barbie. And then the next you're like, fuck you, Barbie. So where are you at now? I think she handled herself very well in this episode because she was like, I just, she, I think she's like maturing to the fact that she's like, I need to pick my battles and these hills are not the ones I need to die on. Correct. And she's, she's come down off of that, like high spirited, like I'm going to, you know, whereas Frazier, what? I said you were just (sighs) putting the finger. Fraser needs to like not take it so personal. And he needs to like cat cat has to go. She's cat's gotta go. She's gotta go. <sighs> she's every exhausting. episode I'm like, she's finally gonna redeem herself. Poor captain is trying to take her under his wing and like they're there. Let's do some weird sports uh, bonding like salt water air. air Surfing, I don't know, whatever that so board it's, is. It's it's a board that has like I forget what it's called, but it's it's like if water you jets, do it so right. it makes it like yeah, so kind of right. The, yeah, the faster you go, it's supposed to like you're supposed to go the propeller's supposed to be just under the water mm-hmm. and it makes you go up. Like but she got there like for what five seconds? Yeah. But like so Captain's even babying her. Barbie's doing her damnedest. <laughs> Fraser is trying to baby her. Fraser's trying to get everybody to baby her. And like every fucking episode, you think maybe they will find some common ground. Mm-hmm. But like everyone is doing their fucking best. And every time she just like runs off and cries in a corner. Like after saying how she charter. feels excluded. But nobody's excluding her. Like she's doing that herself. Yeah. And, like, the whole thing with them being, like, after the charter and they're all, like, dancing and she, like, goes off and she's, like, I'm, like. I don't fit in or or whatever. Or she's not vibing with them. And and this is, this may be, this is going to be real horrible of me to say, but it's never prevented me before. (laughs) I think (laughs) that she's. This is episode 17. (laughs) I think she is used to being the center of attention and mm. I think when I look at everything, none of the guys are paying her attention because she Kyle is giving only child syndrome. But she the funny is. thing is, is Barbie's the only child, isn't is she? she no, I don't, think I don't know, she but she's got the silver spoon. She's... she's got the silver spoon, but she still <clears throat> makes her own damn money and but she doesn't think... give only child vibes. I, I think it's she's not fitting in because none of the guys are giving her attention. Because mm. Yeah, Kyle, but that's that's what I'm saying. Like Zandy is even living her best life, and I don't think she's like she's she has friendships with the guys, but the yeah. guys aren't trying to like get with her and she's fine about it. But I think it's, I think that's her MO. I think Kat's that's Kat's fault. MO. Yeah, I think it's Kat's MO is like I, and she's probably one of maybe two girls on these like short mm-hmm. charters that she's done previously, whereas like other positions have probably been filled with men or probably she's like I said, she's probably been one of two or three girls and yeah. has had the attention. And I think that she. I really think it's just that none of the, she's not getting the attention she's used to. And that's why she doesn't right. fit in. I didn't even think about that. Um, because there are people out there that are socially awkward. But like, what I'm saying is, the rest of the crew is like bending over backwards to include her and to be nice to her and to, you know, they're there. And she's still just like, nobody likes me. It's just. I I, th- I think it's. I, I think knew somebody just, like that. Maybe that's why it triggers me so much. I I think she's just not getting the men's attention. You might be I right. Think or you might be right. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I um Jared is not really Oh, Jared. Oh, Jared. He should not be on the show if we're being honest. Or so he I, shouldn't be I into position. By, correct. I stand by him being a 
like fuck up is in his DNA. I don't think mm. he can help himself. Like I, I think he's a good person. He just he can't help himself and he just keeps fucking up. It's like, oh really, dude? Like he's mm. not malicious, he's not whatever. But he also doesn't need to be drinking as much as he does, or maybe at all, because he seems to turn into a different person when he's drinking. Oh yeah. And like everything that goes on with his like his daughter and stuff, like I, I was, yeah, I was watching this episode and I was like, dude, like, and if you are trying to be a better father, I understand that the money's good, but there's other yeah. jobs that you could be closer to home. Yeah, that you could have cell phone service. I still don't understand how he doesn't have service. I don't, I don't fucking get it because the so captain you seems just fine. He had an iPhone. And then he but had, then he had like a Nokia a, brick in his other hand. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I I think he's very irresponsible. I think that he has very yeah. good intentions to be there for his daughter, but he always it's like he's trying to jump jump from building to j- building, and he literally just misses the building mm-hmm. and slides down the face. Exactly. Of it. Yeah. And like, and you know, poor guy, but. Maybe you should reconsider your life choices to be a better father and be able to make a phone call or FaceTime or like if you and this is. Y'all can fucking come for me, but I'm going to say it. If you want to be a good parent, nothing Mm -hmm. will fucking stop you. I don't care. I don't care what what you have going on in your life. If you genuinely want to if you want to be a good parent. Yeah, like. Hey guys, I've got to take a 15 minute break to go call my daughter. Hey, I you don't you don't want to let me go fuck off. Like I'll go find another job. Like just mm-hmm. prioritize and I'm sorry, being in the fucking Bahamas or wherever the fuck you are, making good money is not a good enough excuse to not be able to call your daughter. Yeah. No, I'm with you. So you ha- you have all of that, but then you also have him like I said, the drinking. Cuz drinking like some people you and I we can drink, and it's almost like we get happier. Mm-hmm. We love everyone. We, yep. I mean, we might get a little sassy, but, like, it doesn't last very long. Like, we're we're good, happy drunks. Yes. He is an angry drunk. I think he's dealing with a lot internally, and when he drinks, it comes out. When the captain has talked to him about it once already, yep. and he dares to do it again, especially the way and they ended that episode. The, cap- the captain wakes up. Wakes him up and says, what the fuck is going on? And he's, like, going after Kyle over... So inappropriate. At 2 o'clock in the morning, when you're both hammered, is not the time to discuss mm-hmm. work. I'm sorry. So unprofessional. No. Yeah. Captain's going to read him for filth and may or may not fire him. <laughs> I am But see, the captain's not really out anything because he can just put Ben in that position. Because Ben's yeah. been in that position pr- previously. So, mm-hmm. um... I'm uh I this episode was interesting. I enjoyed it. It was um, a good episode. I think next episode is going to be really good because I and here's the thing. I'm actually very surprised that Kyle maintained his like composure. Dude because Kyle, he's like if he was a cat, he'd be a rag doll. Like whatever you throw like, at him, he's just like, whatever, man, yep. whatever, dude. Sounds good. He, you left your I fucking remember, tobacco everywhere. Sorry, and, like, bro. like, threw it at him. Like, he is the most chill. Yeah. And then they, they were all talking about when he was like, um, he was like, they were talking about when he started smoking. He was like, oh, it was like 12 or 13. <laughs> yeah. And then he was like, what about your virginity? He was like, yeah, about that. Somewhere Something. around the... I was like... They were like, damn, bro. I grew up know. fast. Like, okay. Oh, and I love his you just, like, you. throw it out there like it's nothing comment about how he's not gay. He could have... Yeah. What did he say? Something about, like, he could appreciate a oh, man or he, he, was he like, would make out with a guy. He he but, said, I tried it, but it wasn't for me. But it, he, Yeah. Yeah, he was like, it just went... Mm. Oh, yeah. what he said. <laughs> And then Fraser said the same thing because he said he'd been with a woman. Yeah, he was like, and they were like, "How just, did that work out?" And it was like, "Oh, it was like, like a credit card. It said decline." <laughs> <laughs> I 
mean, I understand that. Yeah. I I I understand that. I support that. <laughs> but also, it should be a fucking drinking game. Every time you see Ben's ass cheeks, you take a drink. He is so comfortable being like he butt really ass is. naked. He's something about him gives me the ick though. Like he doesn't. I don't hate him. It's just every time I see him, something about him just makes me like. He's very. Um, I think he tries to be like man's man vibe to me if that makes sense like i maybe i don't don't know something about him just irks me i don't know what it is um yeah it was it was a roller coaster of an episode but it was a good episode it wasn't boring it kept my attention yeah and i'm interested for next week but i think the episode ended on that kicker so i'm I'm Mm -hmm. yeah um, I will say I was very sad to watch The Traders without you this week. I was sad too, but I watched the entire show with my mouth hung the fuck open. Oh my God. Because I watched the show and the reunion because they put them both out. Normally, I didn't watch yeah. last the last season's reunion because I was like, eh, I don't know. This reunion, I was like, I gotta watch. I can't not watch. Uh- Okay, so I will say that I'm surprised that Kate didn't win. Spoilers, little... spoilers for anybody that's this not watched it. This is what the show is. A people know. But if you've not watched it, what the fuck are you doing Skip with ahead your to life? Something else. Yeah. Um, I'm real upset Kate lost. Yes, but also, because she didn't really have a game plan other than Sandra, 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 and it just didn't. Yeah. If she would have gotten rid of Trishel, <clears throat> I think she would have That's had where a she fucked up. That's where she, she fucked up. I understand why she got rid of Sheree because she had to she had to get rid she of had to Bravo throw off to the scent. Yeah. But Trishel Trashel. Say her name correct. Trash. Your dumpster called. They want your Trashel back. Well, she got a nice dumpster now. She got half that money. <sighs> okay. So Grouch is moving on up. And the <laughs> all I picture, I pictured Grouch, but then I f- pictured the Family Guy but episode like with of the, Meg. The hat and the <laughs> <laughs> but you know the Family Guy episode where um Meg is like Grouch and she's like, I love trash. Yes. I love trash. <laughs> yeah. Um, but. Okay, so she, I will, I, I will also say when we got to the Ring of Fire or the the Fire of Truth. Yeah. I'm you not it right. Truth. Tru- I can't do it. I'm, you can't do it. Tr- not with not a tr. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, and and spiritual guys. Kyle would be upset. Oh, he's so pretty. Yeah. Um, I. The fire truth. I. Okay, so. It was bullshit. They, Let's start there. Yes. Trash L. Because. Choices. After Kate was eliminated. The way. Trash L doing the shit she, she did. She it all up. Yeah. Why. I this is my thing is I did I did not see a direct companionship between her and CT. Like I I saw them like buddy buddy together, but I did mm-hmm. not see them like working together. Well, they kept continuously saying to each other, "You're the only one I trust. You're the only one I trust." But then when push came to shove, you want to be fucking selfish and say you're a traitor. When like, CT's what like, would, what the hell? What? what the fuck would have happened if MJ was like, okay, CT, and like chose CT too? Right. And then you win, and then poor CT doesn't, and then your friendship is over. Because you're a... Fuck st- Trishel. And Hater. poor, poor, poor MJ. MJ. She, I mean, justice granted, for okay. MJ. The... the Let's be real. She brought horrible fashion and wonderful looks. This was not RuPaul's like, Drag Race. This was the Traders. 
And I guess if we're picking the traitor, it is fucking Trishel, but like that's so, not the point. This is not House of Villains. Yeah. I saw I saw a um like a review of it. And they're like, if we're being real honest, the true traitors, one, were the faithfuls, and two, Trashel and CT. Which I hate because CT, if CT had won all of it, or like, like three of them yeah. had won, like MJ included, I would have been like, all right, good game. You I just know, think like, our hate for Trashel trumps it But Trashel flipping the script on CT, who was the only one she could trust, and then still winning... I just want to be like, fuck you, Trishel. Yeah. yeah. I never liked her. And then she had to fucking win. What is she from again? Where... So she was, so she's from the challenge, but she also. Oh, that's right. She's been part of this as long as CT and Johnny Bananas has. I want to say she might have been on the real world. Or Road Rules. She was back when it was still split. Yeah. And then when they created the challenge, she. Mm. Like, she's been part of this for a long time. She's fucking annoying is what she she's, is. Yeah. Like, go the face. fuck on. Stupid, stupid She didn't deserve face. to win. But good job, CT. I'm happy for him. Yeah. But nobody Poor else. MJ. So, I will tell you, I, so, okay, so CT jumping on that pile of golden coin one was hilarious but how did back. he not break yeah like how did he not break <laughs> his poor back i was like just jump on some bricks already like yeah um, it didn't look comfortable but then him kissing uh alan on the cheek yeah i okay. could see ct being fluid you think so i think he's I a mean, good time guy i don't know about that I feel like he's like, oh, you know what? like I can kiss a guy, but I'll never. I could say, uh, like, like our friend it's a Greg. Good time guy. Yeah. Like, just let's have a good time. If, if I happen to have to agree that we're married for a minute, let's do it. You know, like. Are you saying my gaydar is actually working? Compared to yours? Because usually I can't. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's, um, I don't know. I just. I have a like an affection for CT because I think he's a genuinely good guy. Yeah. And I think I will say like there's like a level like like fantasizing that oh he could he, okay. he's welcome to this side. So you that's know, you're like, maybe speaking it into existence kind of thing. <laughs> you're manifesting it. And and when he kissed Alan, who is a bisexual, <sighs> I <precious>. mean <laughs> it was I was living for it. Um, the reunion got on my fucking nerves. In what way? So I didn't like how they all watched it end at the moment because they didn't do that in season one. Maybe it was to help bring mm. drama. Maybe. But. How did you feel about MJ on the reunion? Because a lot of people are saying it's one thing to lose. It's another to be a a sore loser, but I think she was fucking valid in being as upset as she was. I think she's, um, I don't think she's being a sore loser. I mean, that's my opinion. Maybe because I'm think, being a sore loser with her. Cause I'm mad for her. I think she's valid in her feelings, but it's also, you knew this was a possibility when you signed up, like yeah. at the end of the day, like I hate, I don't want to be like insensitive towards it, but you knew that you could be double crossed. Like, great for you that you made yeah. it to the to the final episode. But, like, at what point did Trashell ever have your back? At what point did CT ever have your back? And I don't want to like throw CT under the bus, but but also the other side of it, they did her dirty. There was nothing, mm -hmm. not once did anybody ever suspect her. She, no. Trashell did that out of greed. She did, 1,000%. She thought, best case scenario, he is a traitor and I caught him and I get more money. Worst case scenario, yeah. he's not a traitor mm -hmm. and I still win some money. You know, yeah. like it was a very selfish, her true color showed. I'll leave it at that. And what there's a I forget what show it was like what was the reason 
what's the reason? Like, you know, like, I mean, what, it, the only reason I have is that it was pure greed. And greed, so yeah. I'm, I am, greed. I am torn on MJ's feelings because she is justified for being backstabbed for no think reason. She's milking it a little bit. <laughs> But I also am like, you signed up for this. Like, what happened in, in what was it? She was part of Survivor? Is that what she was from? No, MJ's from the... Challenge? No. Uh, oh, my gosh. that Big um, Brother? No, no, it's the Indian show. Oh, Shaws of Sunset. That's it. She's from that. I'm sorry, like, in your upset for being backstabbed when you literally... Jerry, who said you won? I'm just, like, logic and reason, as my husband says. Oh, my God. I know what side you're on. What? CT. Front or back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, um, I just... I, yeah. I, I, I'm mixed on her being as upset as she is. So. I'm upset for her, so I'm here for yeah. it. I, I would I would have acted and treated Trishel the same way. Because really, Trishel is the one that fucked it up. CT played the game, did. did as he was expected. MJ did the same. Trishel is the one that fucked everything up so she could get more money. That's but, who I would be mad at, not CT. And see, she Trishel knew, she knew that CT would never vote for her. Regardless of the facts, she would yeah. ne- he would never vote she, for her. So she, she she played CT as well to get her to do. I mean, I, I she did the best with what she had. She got yeah. to the very last three, and the other two are more or less up each other's assholes. Yeah. So like, what what was she gonna do? She was like, I am just here for whatever happens next. Yeah. But they could have all three said, let's end the game now and split it three ways and all three been winners. But they shut would have, fuck shit up. They would have gotten like, what, 60? What was the final pot? It was like 208,000 or something like that. Was it? Yeah, I think oh. that's what the... Um, I... So the the pot was about uh, I think it was like two hundred it might have been like two hundred one eight hundred or something, something like over two hundred thousand yeah yeah but yeah and they so, still would have gotten a nice chunk of change each if it was the three of them but your shell's oh, yeah. fucking greedy yeah she's a greedy greedy bitch she's a greedy um, troll I will say also I'm I. <sighs> I've always been mixed on Sheree as an individual, but I'm surprised that she made it as long as she did. I mean, if your strategy is pretend like you don't know what the fuck's going on and just show yeah. up, <laughs> it's a good strategy. Yeah. Nobody suspected her. She hung in there. She was part of the she was part of a clique, so nobody wanted to get rid of her if they were part of her clique. She did something right. Well, what do you think about when so when Andy Cohen asked about um, asked Phaedra why CT was Castle Daddy, and she she seemed to be like, oh shit, like mm-hmm. I think like low key she had the hots for him, which is understandable. I think they had a for sure connection and bond. Mm-hmm. I don't know if either of them would act on it. But, like, there's something there. I'm here for it. I'm here for it oh, all yeah. day. If Us Weekly comes out tomorrow or page six and they're like, CT and Phaedra are a couple now, I'd be like, absolutely, when's the wedding? Are you going to yep. live stream it? Yep. But yep. I don't think either of them, they come from two different worlds. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't know. They're adorable. And I think there is yeah. something there. But I don't know if either of them would act on it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Because she's an attorney living her housewife life or married to medicine now, I guess. And then so I he think... is the MTV challenge guy. Yeah. So I didn't realize this, but I found it out the other day. So Phaedra, she's on married to medicine, but she's not married nor in medicine. 
So why is she on the show? Is she That's a main character question. or is she a friend? I've never watched it. She's she's like one of the main characters. Was she married to somebody in medicine and they no. got divorced? No. She was married to that convict of a... Oh, I remember. He was real pretty. <laughs> the best ones are. <laughs> Apollo. Was that his name? Yeah. 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 Um... <laughs> I would love nothing more, though, than for Phaedra and CT to be an actual couple. That would just make my whole yeah. fucking day. Yeah. Um, you want to move on to Vanderpump? Vanderpump. So, okay. yeah, you want to go first or... So I texted you yesterday and it was like OFMG. Yeah, but I hadn't watched yet. Because we do, we still try to not discuss it at all with each other. Other than yeah. maybe I'm just going to say one word or something like that. We keep it real short. But you watched it first and then I watched it. Okay. So, so expand on your OMFG. Fucking Katie. If there was, I now, just, are we talking about Katie at lunch, Katie, or Katie versus Lala at the astrology thing? Which, all of it? <laughs> I don't know who's the biggest, b- bigger bitch. Is yeah, but Ariana? Listen. Is Ariana the bigger bitch for being a bitch, or is Katie being? A bigger bitch for being the bitch of the sidekick. Like the sidekick yeah, of the bitch. Yeah, but isn't she valid in being the bigger bitch? Is she okay, not valid? So. We know her ex-husband. And we know her best friend. And they're both. They're both their worlds are fucking ruined by Sandoval. I would be fucking bitter too. Yes, but. Here's the thing. Okay, so let's break down the lunch situation. Okay. They asked, they asked how Tahoe was. They asked about Sandoval. And then you want to sit there and get pissed off because I'm telling you what you fucking asked? Like, how self-righteous are you? And I mean, I was a little teeter-totter then, on the fence with that part. And then, she, then when she made her comment about moving on, they moved on to the fucking bartender and Sheena fucking the bartender. And I, I she blame was like, it on... The a- 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 alcohol, because you know, no, you know, no. you know, when you're drinking alcohol and you're not a hundred percent present. <laughs> I blame it on. I can't get it. Stand Poor up y'all. a little bit so people can really read it. <laughs> I blame it on this right here. Okay. So well, I, but is she I, wrong? No, Sandoval's a piece of shit. But okay. that's like me. It's it's she fucking ga- gaslit the situation. I meant to get my husband's opinion on this whole thing. To those, I, I don't think I've mentioned it, but he's back in rehab. I love him. He's struggling, but he went straight back to rehab, like the champ he is. But he is keeping up with Vanderpump from rehab, so I love that for him. I meant to get his opinion on this because he loves Katie. Oh, I think well. he would leave me for Katie. <laughs> like, I, think I think he has. He loves think, him some Katie. I, this is my thing is like, okay, I've had a problem with Katie. For she's a very for long everyone. time. I talk trash about her too. We both talk about how she is not, she's a stuck up bitch right now. And I'll, yes, yeah, she is. I just think she's valid in her feelings about Sandoval. That's all. But then don't ask about it. Because she asked how Tahoe was. She asked, like, and I understand, maybe maybe Sheena, I mean, I feel kind of weird taking up for Sheena because. Oh, God. <laughs> but why, like, maybe Sheena shouldn't have elaborated as much as she did. But it, it was like, there was no, like, hey, can we just move on from this? It was like, are you fucking done yet? But she was there for the FaceTime. From, between Sheena and Ariana from the boat in Tahoe, she knows how Tahoe was. I think she was saying it more as a, 
You know, like when you're passing someone, you're like, hey, how's it going? Like, do you really care how's it going? Or are you just saying that for formalities? Maybe she was just saying, oh, how was Tahoe? And she was expecting a, it was all right. And then a, ooh, what you drinking? What you eating? Like, moving on. She Maybe. wasn't expecting this full. I, I just know. think, okay, so what about when her and Lala went back and forth? I, I think I it's... can't figure out. I love Lala. I love her so much, but I cannot for the life of me figure out who she stands for and whose side she's on. And maybe that's the whole thing is she's not on anyone's side. She just wants everyone to get the fuck along. Maybe that's her whole point. But like she flip flops. One moment she's team Sheena. One moment she's team Sandoval. One moment she's fuck Sandoval. One moment she's, you know what I mean? Like she. I, I think the situation is. So let's break, and from my perspective, let's break it down from, let's start with Sandoval. She has compassion for Sandoval because of his mental state. Okay. I I, I can support that. She's, mm-hmm. let's not be hard on him. Let's, we can be mad at him, but you don't mm-hmm. need to go for the jugular. Okay. Punish him, but not punish him to the point where he wants to kill himself. Right. Sheena, I think. I I think when it comes to Sheena, she understands the struggle of trying to reconcile with somebody that's hurt you, but also not pissing off your best friend. Because mm-hmm. I I and I think she's trying to toe that line of maybe because Sheena's not in in this situation, Sheena's not stepping up to the plate to talk to Ariana about her feelings. And I think Lala's like, well, I'll be the champion of this for you. And that's when, you know, they're at James and Allie's house. And she was like, this is, this is what you get. You no longer get to be her friend. If you have any kind of connection with him, because the, and Mm -hmm. you and I have talked about this. I understand Ariana being like, I want nothing to do with him. I want like, but do you really, can you really control? Can you put that ultimatum? You You really shouldn't. Yeah. Like I would never, I don't think you would ever. I just wouldn't be like, I, you just wouldn't want to hear about it. You, you could separate the two where Ariana can't separate the two. It's all or nothing. And, and as much as I want to, I have sympathy for her situation. People get cheated on every single day. People. People. You don't have to be such a hardcore. It's not a black and white issue. It's a gray area. And maybe that's where that's the whole point behind La La is you can be an asshole and we can not like you for it, but we can still come together at the end of the day. We don't Absolutely. have to drag you through the streets. Sheena, you can be a whiny bitch, but I can also be your friend and try to lift you mm-hmm. up even when you're being extra. Like exactly. maybe that is Lala's whole point. So that's fine. It's just, it's hard to keep up. And maybe that's why I get confused is because everyone else seems to draw a hard, firm line where Lala's more like, I'm here for you until you turn and then fuck you. I'm here for you until you turn and then fuck you. Like, yeah. cause she went the fuck off on Sandoval, but then in the same breath of the same day mm-hmm. is team Sandoval and is like, yeah, you fucked up, but like, I'm here for you. But then also yeah. tells him he's scary and he grooms and manipulates. Like that's, I guess where I get confused. And, and that's and, why and, maybe I was siding with Katie because Katie comes from, I guess I try to look at where they're coming from Katie was married to Schwartz forever. Schwartz is Schwartz. We all know him and love him. Mm -hmm. But when you're married to somebody and their best friend is very influential, he gives cult leader vibes. Say what Mm -hmm. you want about him, but he's very, he is that car salesman. Oh, he's a fuck boy, but like he puts a spell on you. Like you can't, he's charismatic. He can. Oh he yeah. Blend in with any kind of group of people. He seems like a fun guy. Is he a Completely. good guy? So like Katie, I think sees through that bullshit because she sees Schwartz being manipulated by Sandoval at times mm-hmm. and has seen him obviously 
pull some shit on Ariana, who is her best friend. So as Katie, I guess I'm looking at from her perspective, like, fuck Sandoval and the horse he rode in on, and I don't want to hear anything else about it. So maybe, I don't know. I, I, I get that, but I just think that, I just think that she is, I mean, she's, she's the Sandoval. She's the Schwartz, the Sandoval. She's, she's, what am I trying to say? She's Schwartz to Ariana. I know, right? She's, she's the Schwartz to Ariana. She's, oh, you're not wrong. Like, she (laughs) are not wrong. (laughs) Like, that's just the way I look at it. It's like, if we're, I mean, she kind of here's the thing. Fine. And, and I'm, yeah. God forbid something was to happen between my husband and I. You're friends with both of us. And I love you, Andrew, but you know whose side I would choose if I was speaking from Katie's perspective. But also, at the end of the day, I would never be like, you can't be his friend. That's what I'm saying. Like, we don't do that. I would just say. You don't want to hear about it. Yeah. I don't, I don't care what you do. And if, if, if you kept bringing him up around me, I would. I would then distance myself from you. I would not. Yeah. Because. And and there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm also never going to give somebody an ultimatum, be their friend or you can't be my friend. Like, I don't like, Mm -hmm. I hate to be this way. People get cheated on every single day. You're not the, don't, you're not the fucking mortar for it. You remind me of the, God, this is going to show our age. Alex James. Back in the Vine days where he'd go, you're not special. <laughs> no, you're you're right. But heartbreak fucking sucks. And so. Absolutely. Like I said, it's a gray area. It's not mm-hmm. picking and choosing teams. It is. It's it's a mess and it's complicated. It but there's also a level of like it. it it's almost like. I think if Katie and Ariana got notification that Sandoval killed himself, they would they would blink their eyes one or two times and then keep doing whatever they're doing. You really think so? Oh, I think they would be complete bitches about it. Oh well, one less piece of shit off the earth. Like I really think Oh, that's that's pretty dark and deep. I know, oh, no. but I that's that's the vibes they give me. Like you have literally yeah. said I will cut people on my life that associate with him. Like, so what, if that's how you're going to treat people that are your friends or your best friends that may or may not have compassion for him. And if something was to happen to him, how would they actually react to him? Okay. Let's say he doesn't commit suicide. Let's say he gets in a car wreck. I could see Ariana being like, Oh, did it not leave him as a vegetable? Oh, it didn't kill him. See, I wouldn't go that far, but I also think that everyone has the same heart I do. So I would like to think that she would be upset. I, you don't, I don't think that she's no. capable of it. And and maybe that's her hurt. I, I don't want to um I don't want to discount her mm-hmm. um her feelings, but I also don't think she's capable of it. I really don't. Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay, well, let's switch gears. <laughs> Cause I sure as hell don't want to talk about Sheena. Um, and I feel like we have ex- explained our opinions on the matter at hand. What do you think about Joe? That's what I really want to know. I think that. So I, I, I Be had honest. a fill in that they were together or they wanted to be together like fuck buddies yes and yeah. so that got clarification but then i just think that she is she is the female version of schwartz is she not like are they can we do a dna test are we <laughs> sure they're not siblings because i've never seen a female schwartz in my life and this is it 
And I think this is it. they're both just that free individual, like that free spirit. Yeah, but spirit. how many people like that have you met in your life? I've met maybe one it's, that had yeah, that exact personality. Yeah, it's very few and far between. Like, these two need to be together. Oh, yeah. I mean, and I think, but I also think that, I think Schwartz is so, if we're being honest, I think he's, he's still scared. in love with Katie. And still in love with Katie, for sure. And um, I think maybe I'm a little bit bitter about Katie leaving him. Maybe that's why I hate Katie so much. You just don't like Katie, and that's okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't like, I don't, see, I don't like Sheena either, but I like, I don't like them for different reasons. Sheena's right. a whiny person. Anyways, back that, not down that rabbit back hole. Back to Joe. Joe, I just, she is the, she is the female version of, of Schwartz. She really they is. They belong together. I just, he seems so much more at peace when they're around each other. He, thank you. So, Joe, when they first introduced her, we only got like this much of her. It was like a couple episodes back. Yep. But now that we've got like the full Joe experience, mm-hmm. if it's just scenes with the camera is on her, all yeah. I keep thinking is, is like, Ooh, she seems like a lot. Yeah. She seems like that friend that like you kind of have to preface before meeting her <laughs> or apologize after the fact of like, that's just Joe. You know what I mean? Like she just is unhinged and wild and like beats to her own drum. Yeah. But then when they show Schwartz, and they show them together. I'm like, if there was a perfect person for Schwartz, this is it. And if they're not going to end up together, she needs to fucking I don't go. believe in love. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just don't. This, this is Schwartz's soulmate. Yeah. I know he she really pain, is, but it's not. It's Joe. I think. I think that Schwartz thinks Katie is his soulmate because she created stability that he's not had in his life. They did. They were their yin and yang for each other. Yes. Yeah. But I don't. I don't think. And I think he can have that with somebody like Joe. He just has to allow himself to have that. I agree. He just seems so himself around her. Yes. And so happy and just so comfortable. Mm -hmm. Like he Mm -hmm. doesn't have to put on a face or if you know how he is when he comes to like get togethers and he's like, I don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah. And then they both break out in the robot together (laughs) and like they're laughing and it's like, yeah, it's adorable. It really is. Um, but I don't know. We'll see how that goes. She's definitely down. He is just terrified. And like you said, I feel, I think yeah. he's still in love with Katie, but she's clearly like, we can get married right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Say less. Mm-hmm. I also love the, so I know the astrology thing was kind of a shit show, but I love yeah. how the guys got together and like dressed up. It was like a little James Bond dinner date yeah. at the steakhouse. That's what it's made precious. me. That's what made me think about us going to a Brazilian steakhouse. In I Vegas. had a feeling when I was watching yeah. it. I put the two and two together, and I was like, "He, he's thinking Vegas and steakhouse." Because did you, you know the last time I went to one was when we all went together. Oh, uh, to the one in. That's um, the last time. There, yeah. To Brasilia, yeah. Mm-hmm. I there's one down here in Charlotte, but it's. Have you been? No. Um, it's chima is what it's called and i think um i don't know i i'd be down to try it if you guys are up for it one time sam doesn't do he's a weirdo he it's too much meat for him i am a fucking carnivore give me all the meat i keep that thing green i want my money's worth (laughs) yeah all the give me all the meat (laughs) i agree with you so if you want to go and try it i'd be down at some point. Yeah. We have a lot planned. We do. We're always like, let me get out my planner and yeah. pencil this in for next weekend. Mm-hmm. <sighs> but yeah, it. I definitely was happy with this episode, especially in comparison to last week's, because I cannot fucking take the Sheena show anymore. I can't. Oh, it was it wasn't if it, bad. If it's going to turn, like, if it seems like it's going that direction where it's just going to be the Sheena show, I will fucking turn it off. And I'll be like, you just talk about it this week. You catch me <laughs> up to speed. Because I'm not, I can't. What do you think about the whole Sheena being, 
I wouldn't say jealous, but but hurt over. Jealous the is whole, the right word. <laughs> about Dancing with the Stars. So they touched on it last week with yeah. the episode. She briefly said, because for a moment I got deja vu. I was like, am I on the right episode? Because she's mm-hmm. still talking shit about this Dancing with the Stars thing. Yeah. First off, she got blocked or banned or whatever from the Dancing with the Stars set 10 years ago because she brought a weed pin with her. So 10 years later, you want to apply to be on the show, they're going to be like, fuck you, no. Well, so I saw that and it was, she was banned for 90 days, I think. Yeah, but like, you're already on their bad side, but you're trying to get yeah, on the show. Yeah, it's like. You're barking it's up like, the wrong tree. Being fired or quitting with no f- notice and having to and wait six to years. Back. Yeah. And then like, yeah, you it walked out on It just leaves a bad us. taste in their mouth. Yeah. 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 So she was like, I can be upset for myself and happy for her at the same time. It's like, no, bitch. No, you. Like, just be happy for her. Like, oh, my God, I'm so glad you got on. But like, it, maybe all the memes. All yeah. the memes. They were all true, but the yeah. mean girls one of Gretchen Wieners being like, because I'm such a good friend. Yeah. That is Gina. Yeah. No, you're not. Oh, yeah. You're jealous. Ugh, I can't. I hate, I can't. Sheena, just seeing her <laughs> face and her. I can't. Uh, she's a beautiful girl. Don't get me wrong. There's but like, certain her moments. personality makes her so ugly to me. <laughs> There's certain moments when she's not like if her mouth is not shut all the way, her mouth it looks is like a like a trout. It yeah. Oh wow. my god, yeah. But it's also like it gives me Joker vibes. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. God. Like I said, she's a pretty girl. She's done a little too much. Um her personality just makes her very ugly to me. Yeah. Drag me in the comments. I don't care. I'll die on that mountain. <laughs> I feel my blood pressure getting up. You want to move yeah. on to Real Housewives of Potomac? Yeah. So what were your thoughts on this episode? Because. Well, uh, per use, I didn't write much down. Yeah. I did love I... seeing Sharice, even though she was her table banging Dude, scary Sharice. What? She was. I love Sharice in all forms. <laughs> she is not one that I'm like miserable to see. She and here's the thing is with that scene, she instigated it and then like had a meltdown over it. She had too much champagne, God. and then suddenly like a fresh breath air just resolved everything for her. I was <laughs> yeah. like, God, I wish that worked for me. I just she was love. Like, her going from zero to 60 so fucking fast and everyone around her like <laughs> and several of them made the comments she was like she's drunk she's had yeah. too much um but the, the everything i read about potomac is it's a snooze fest it's yes and... nobody is happy with it right now so they're either going to cancel it or reboot it they have to they there's key people they need to get rid of. All right, you don't have to tell me. I know it starts with a G and ends in the Izel. And it starts with a K and ends with an Aaron. Yeah. I I, I think I just, Karen's too big for her britches now. She's gotta go. I, I think just Robin's think she's played go. out. Yeah. Oh God. Several Robin people need should to go. have been she should have Robin should have been a friend of the season. She should not have, like, that joke yeah, of a I dr- agree. DR trip, like. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is, did did you have to, like, I don't know, like, I, I just. How's that go? <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of that Chick Fil A girl. She's like, Oh my God, Chick Fil A, no Chick Fil A. <laughs> you sure you don't want the <laughs> Chick Fil A sauce? <laughs> uh, and she even pops her tongue too. And yes, and, uh, it cracks me up. Anyways, I just 
there's, there's not much to say. I will say that How do you feel Jacqueline... about Jacqueline? Okay. okay. Let's, let's talk about her because the rest of them, yeah, boring. I mean, Jacqueline's not much more either, but she at least was something different this episode. Yeah, but... Her and Mia and their little... <laughs> but here's the thing. Do you like Jacqueline? No. <laughs> you said that like I was... It wasn't a rhetorical question. Like, I genuinely didn't know if you liked her or not. I I'm okay with her. I just, She's all right. I just think that... Okay, so last season, they had that huge falling out. Everything Which they was, dug into on this episode. Right, but everything was fine until Jacqueline got her few minutes on TV. Mm-mm. Mm. No, 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 no. If this was Bravo, rewind the tapes. Because before even going to the party, I'm almost positive Mia, somebody brought up to Mia's attention that, like, she was going to be there or she was invited or something. And they were like, are you good? And she was like, oh, no, not – like, they were – Oh, Karen. Karen uh, – no. Was it a Karen? Gis- no, it was Giselle somebody. brought it up. Giselle brought it up. Yeah. So, I don't know. I I just – I just – She was a good, like, turn of pace, but I just it's don't. It's different. It was. It, it. But here's the thing. Just because you put lipstick on a pig doesn't mean that it's not a pig. Like, it's still boring. Just because you add a new character doesn't mean that it's not boring anymore. Like, it's it's as still boring a boring as show. As the crabs were without the seasoning. Whoa, they How were the dragging hell? her not... for that. What's the opposite of racist? I don't want to be like I'm reaching too hard, maybe. I don't know. But black people know how to season their food is what I'm trying to say. Yes. And they show up to a crab boil hosted and participating by all black, beautiful black women. Mm -hmm. And the crabs had no seasoning. I was shocked. Yeah. Shocked. Somebody, what are they saying? Where's the old bay at? Oh, God, yeah. Where's the Lowry something? (laughs) She was like, I, Jacqueline did say, she was like, does she not know what seasoning salt is? Oh, right? no, that was, was that not Aneka? I think they it might were making comments. Yeah, Aneka like, definitely made a comment. She was like, do you not know? She was like, it's okay, it could use some seasoning. <laughs> I mean, I personally don't like seafood. I, I'll dabble in it. More for me. Yeah. I'll dabble mm-hmm. in it here and there. I just don't, it's not... We, um, there's this, the new pasta place down from yeah. us. And. Ooh, do they have and, like a good shrimp pasta kind of thing? So, so they have a, they have like pre-made sauce, uh, pastas you can get, but then you can do like a build your own and you mm-hmm. can do like the different types of noodles and then the different. So they do a mar- a like a red sauce and Alfredo and a pesto, and then you can do chicken, Italian sausage, shrimp. Mm-hmm. And I think another like kind of shaved meat. Um, and Andrew got the sh- shrimp and shrimp pasta if it's with the right sauce is well, he did amazing. the he did the Alfredo. So. Alfredo, probably, yeah. But the shrimp was kind of it was like it was even fish too fishy for him. Like he couldn't eat it. Um, but I I, we we also were like a bottle and a half of rosé in, so that sounds like the best fucking time to me, and I'm sad that I yeah. wasn't invited. Yeah, well, <laughs> you're only two hours from me. I know. I'll drive well, two hours for a good pasta dinner with right? some of my besties. Say less. We'll have to do it then. Um, yeah. it, but I back to the whole seafood thing. I don't. I appreciate some seasoning. But yeah. if it's Regardless seafood the with no involved. seasoning, yeah, like come on, yeah, um, that sounds gross. But it was it was the I literally was up doing stuff while I was watching the episode. That's how Potomac is. Potomac yeah. is my put the dishes up, fold laundry. You know, mm-hmm. it's my watching the background show where it used yeah. to be eyes glued popcorn and yeah. hand show way back in the day. I don't know where it lost its about two litter, seasons I ago. I would dare say maybe well no, nah, I think you're right. 
it, season. It, yeah. Maybe <clears throat> three. But I just, I don't know. It makes I me just, really sad because I did used to really love it. And and again, let's be very clear, y'all. We, I love a good glow up, but. Oh, yeah. You're on a reality TV. All these women that have been on the show, they've gone on to do bigger things. Mm -hmm. And I'm here for it, but you're where you came from. Like, okay, Giselle was known because of who she was married to previously. Um, Who was Robin? Exactly. We're still trying to figure that out. Um, Karen. She was. I still didn't know who the fuck she was until Potomac, but like, like they brought something and it's like, as I just think that as they have glowed up, they have become. Their personalities have changed. Dramatically and shame on Bravo for not. Phasing out and bringing in new or being like, Hey, you guys brought this. Our viewings are dwindling. Like trash. Yeah. And I, I, I don't like good for them for like doing more with themselves, but you're on reality TV. Like, like it reminds me <laughs> of, and again, I'm going to show my age. I'm embarrassed and ashamed to say I was a teen mom person, mm. teen mom and 16 and pregnant. It was so good at the time. It was that raw reality TV with yeah. like good drama. But like I kept watching teen mom up until probably four or five years ago. And yeah. I feel like even that was way too long, but it was because I was so, I was already invested. Yeah. Like I didn't care about the show. It was the same. I would do laundry or what, but I just wanted to know, well, where what are they at now? Yeah. What's going on now? Yeah. And it was never anything important or anything entertaining. It was just like, well, I've already, I've already watched all these other seasons. Mm-hmm. And then I finally got to the point where I was like, this is a waste of time. And I haven't watched it since. Yeah. And do I care what they're doing now? No. <laughs> So Potomac's getting to that point. Well, for me, yeah, I'm. I I just hope next season they they gotta pick it up. I mean, there's been some good explosions, you know, Wendy and Aneka. Mm Mm-hmm. Um. This this the whole back and forth between Robin and Candace. I it just seems that um. I'm I'm just over it. If we're being honest at this point, I mean, speaking of being over it, this was the Beverly Hills ending part three of the reunion, the final part. Yes. And oh, she's a witch. She's a witch. So you remember how that played out and how she's not. Oh, I I think she is. What do you mean a witch? Like a witchy witch or like mm-hmm. a, just a witch bitch? Wiggle her nose and suddenly Sutton's <laughs> passing out when they're talking about how powerful she is and she's darting her eyes over at her. She shook in her boots and passed out. Yeah. Everything was fine until Kathy came on set. And she even I said like I was getting ready to come for her. And Kyle yeah. started laughing and said she knew it. Yeah, because yeah, Kathy's a little. What a way to not be, yeah. <laughs> Samantha the witch. Yeah. Um, I just think that here's the thing. We made the comment when in the beginning of the reunion about the text that Kyle sent to Reet. And we mm-hmm. said that Kathy was involved. Yeah. I'm going to on that, as you know. I. I just think that um, I just don't like Kathy and I I don't think that she has a place for Beverly Hills because she's very. I will say I was shocked that she was part of the reunion because she's not part of the show anymore. No, she wasn't even in the season. No, not even as a friend or a dinner, like nothing. So maybe, maybe they brought just for Kyle's relationship and how they went from not speaking to speaking now. But like, that wasn't, I don't, I don't that, know why they brought her on. Well, there's the accusations that Erica made that you don't want no people's afraid of her. 
And but that's my point. Is like why? That's when Kathy said, "I'll show you." Um, what do you think about like everything with Kyle? That is a loaded question because everything is a lot. Are you talking about her and Mauricio? Are you talking about her and Kathy? Are you talking about her and Morgan? I I just feel like she has a lot going on, and there's All no the like things going on. There's no sus- substance to it, if that makes sense. Like, I'm yeah. sorry that her, like, okay, so, like, the whole Mauricio She's going thing. through a lot, but it's boring? I mean, what you're saying? because she's not really giving too much. So they asked about Mauricio, and yeah, they, she, like, slowly alluded stuff. But I found out more about, like, what's going on with her and Mauricio through tabloids that M- Mauricio has dropped her or said mm-hmm. something more than she's yeah. given in any any confessional or anything. And I understand. But she admitted maybe to that. She was trying to maintain a face. Like Yeah, as long as she could until the dam broke loose and she couldn't do it anymore and had to tell her kids and tell the world. And when you're with someone that long, that's gotta be hard. Yeah, I mean they haven't I been get married it. two I or just... three years. They've been married twenty, almost thirty years. Like Yeah. And you're doing it publicly. And people are just telling you all the shit you don't want to hear. Like, if you and your, when you get married, or even break up, you're not even married, you break up, the last thing you want to hear about is what your ex is doing. Whether you loved them or hated them, you don't want to know what they're doing. You want them to, out of sight, out of mind. So when you have tabloids, your own friends, oh, Mauricio's hanging out with so-and-so and and holding hands, and he's at the ski resort, and he's, Mm -hmm. it's like... I I don't blame her. I really don't. I can't imagine what that's like for her and then having to do it so publicly and still keep, you know, keep poise, keep that crown up. You know what I mean? Yeah. My hat's off to her. That's all. What about the whole Morgan situation? Woo! I got some notes about that. I'm here for it because. Nuggets in there. So I know you guys being a gay couple, you probably, there's no way you do this. But like with Sam and I, when we watch shows, especially reality shows, and a guy does something or a girl does something, we ask each other, what do they really mean? What do they really say? Oh, yeah. You know, because like as a woman's brain and a man's brain kind of like thinking differently. I had the ball in my court on this because they're both women. (laughs) But Kyle said... When she, especially you talking about the whole music video that she did. Yeah. The hot and steamy music video. When they were like, what about that? Like, what about, are you dating her? Do you like her? Could you see yourself with her? You kissed her in the, she said, well, in order to do the music video, obviously I was curious in order to say yes. That was yeah. my first, uh, say you're gay without saying you're gay. Right. Also, she's hot. What can I say? And then the final thing, because even then I was like, She's she's not sure, but she's down. Oh, yeah. She's 100% down. I wasn't sure before because, like I said, besties, at least female besties, can give off lesbian vibes mm-hmm. very easy. So I get it. But also when they said, could you see yourself with Morgan? Are you going to date Morgan? And she straight up said, I don't know. They're going to end up together. Yeah. They're going to come public. But then, sure. but then Andy even asked her, was like... Um, are y'all a thing? And she was like, um, um, yeah, no. And I'm like, if you have to, like, I just, if you That's have what I'm to, saying. Think it's not about a definitive it, no, yeah, like, yeah, the hesitation, the eyes moving around. I think what happened is they were besties, and then I think Morgan asked her to do that music video, and she said, I'd never kissed a girl. And I think when they kissed, something happened, and it yeah, evolved you're... from there. That's what my female brain's telling me. I mean, good for her if she finds love. I and hope so. you know, But I'm just like, if I am also... here for it. Just live your truth. Yes. Like, you're a public eye. Maybe not Mauricio. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he's here for it, too. I don't know. I don't know. I... Earlier seasons, I thought he was really hot. I mean, he's still attractive now, but 
there doesn't seem to be much going on up here. Yeah. He seems kind of a dodo brain. <laughs> but looks wise, you know I like my dark skin. He's got something there. <laughs> He's got something there. Um and Kathy and Kyle, I just think that Kathy's a master manipulator. She's absolutely and she's up she's up opportuno- opportunistic. Yes. Thank you. Um, That's what I'm here for. <laughs> I just think that she was like, oh, Kyle's having a hard time. Let me go support me her. Slide and, in and mend our relationship. Yeah. 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 And um, I just. Yeah. I, um, I don't care for I don't care for any of the Hiltons, if we're being honest, but. That's another story. Even Paris, too? Oh, God, no. Oh. <laughs> okay. Because, you know, I, I will thought say... about watching her show. Because I've heard it's really good. I had no desire I to, just... but I've heard it's really good. She just annoys me. Like, everything about her annoys me. Yeah, understandable. I will say, I went through, like, a really brief period when she had her album. Mm-hmm. Stars or something. Stars. I, I hear the the gay I, anthem. It's it might have bop. been. It was a gay pop. <laughs> I just, but I, yeah, I don't, I don't genuinely care for her too much. You don't like her as a person. No. Um, she rates up there with all the Hiltons. Right up there, right along with the Kardashians for me. I'm, I'm with you. Um, they are famous for what? I mean, waiting. the Hilton name. I, um, okay, fine. The Hiltons have a name because of the hotel chain. The brand, yeah. But what else? I mean, that's really it. And then when she got, you know, old enough to be, uh, I guess, like the teen era, she hung out with Lindsay Lohan and Britney Spears and all them. Mm-hmm. They were all, be it, well, frenemies i will say because oh, you know, yeah. one day they were besties the next they hated each other and yeah yeah mean girl status mm-hmm. um but other than that i feel like i feel like this last episode was really just the kyle show there wasn't too was. much um i will i will say like I'm part of me hopes that they don't bring Anna Anne Marie back or Anna Marie. I back. don't think they will. I think that's a pretty solid. Yeah. Choice at this time because of all the shit she caused and all the mm-hmm. like viewers did not like her. Like no. it's safe to say she is not returning. I, I think, think it I might think, even be out there by now that it's, she's officially not returning. Yeah. I think she, she turned the season around. I think she mended things very well, but I just think that she, she, right. destroyed yeah, I mean, I just think that she really ruined her chances with the first couple episodes. I um, agree. Crystal the potential is there. And yes, Crystal's got to go. She's got to well, go. Well, she, her final thought was, "Well, I, I, m- my voice is worth hearing," and I'm like, "But to who? Her husband and nobody else. Nobody likes her. Nobody cares." I just think I just think she meddles where it's not needed and then then plays the victim on it. Agreed. One hundred percent. She's also real boring, Mm. had no storyline pretty much at all. And then suddenly at the reunion tries to over talk everyone and interject her opinion when nobody Mm -hmm. asked for it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, And Erica has to come back. I. Um, I just feel so there was a moment. Okay, I don't know if you caught it, but there was a moment in the this episode where I think Kyle was talking or Kathy was talking. They were it, and they showed Erica and her, she was she was themed. She was like this bullshit, and I was Erica's like, this is why I love facial her. expressions. The entire reunion. 
Oh, yeah. Have been on fucking point. Yeah. Like, everything that we are feeling and thinking, they pan to Erica, and she's giving... It's like looking in a mirror. Like, I fucking love Erica. She... I I think the thing is, is, like, Erica is a good example of a housewife roller coaster. Because mm -hmm. she started what really high... Point. Yes, she and she, you know, she lost everything, and now she's she literally glowed up, literally almost immediately. But she aspects. brings it to the fucking table. She yeah. brings everything to the table. She brings attitude. She brings attitude, fun. looks, mm -hmm. personality, and funny. Oh my god, her, everything. She, she's the whole package. She was the best dressed at this reunion. For sure. For sure. Um, and then you had. Mother Dorit over here. <laughs> Mother Dorit, but also, again, fashion's not my forte. Sutton, her dress seemed like something out of like a limited two store. It really, it was, it was very basic for her. Basic and like teenager almost looking. When yeah. everyone else was at least trying, even Dorit and her hot mess was looked. They were trying for an adult fashion. Yeah. L e w k. Luke. A Luke. Um, some passed, some failed, but I felt like Sutton yeah. just, I don't know, she, she could have done better. She, yeah, I feel like previous seasons were way, way better for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, no, Erica was hands down best dressed. Yes. Um, are you going to, before we move on, are you going to watch Bet It All on Blonde? I was going to ask if you've watched it yet, because isn't it no. available on Peacock now? Yeah, there's... And I keep forgetting about it. There's... it's Is it just two episodes? Mm-hmm. It's a two-parter. Yeah. Maybe we can... We can talk about it next it. week if you want to. Yeah, let's watch it this weekend and then make it a... Because yeah. we're so, losing 90 Day, Beverly mm -hmm. Hills. What was the other one? Traitors. Uh, Traitors. Love is Blind is over. Like, we've got, we we need to fill some shoes. So, yeah, yeah let's do Love is, Love is Blind. Can you tell where my mind is at? Whew. Let's do Bet It All on Blonde and discuss it next week. Sounds great. And then, if y'all have any suggestions, before we do 90 Day Fiance, if y'all have any suggestions of stuff y'all want us to pick up or watch or even yeah. entertain, let us know. I know that there's a couple other franchises. Like that Summer getting... House is out right now and everyone keeps yeah. talking about it. I just don't, it just seems eh, to me. I... Tell us, are we wrong? Is it good? Should so, we okay. give it a chance? Well, you watched I... some Winter House, didn't you? Yeah. It's. Mm -hmm. It gives me like, early season housewives vibes it's well, like what what franchise though because depending on what you're referring to like atlanta i'd be like sign me up i'm watching it tonight i don't it's just okay so the i the premise of like winter house is they they're like new york city people they work you know hustle and bustle and then for summer uh for winter vacation they go to like aspen and rent a house and okay. it's like all bunch Boring. of friends and there's drama and it's like the first couple like the first season i watched it's like very it gives me orgy vibes oh. like they all just like sleep so around Vanderpump, early season vanderpump yeah, yeah yes Yes. Kind of boring. They all want to fuck each other, or they all are fucking each other. Because that's what Vanderpump was the House first, like, three different. to four seasons. But was it Kyle? Oh, you just reminded me. Are we going to watch the ballet or no? Okay. As much as I hate him, I think we need to. Okay. Because a lot of people were saying the first trailer they put out was like, this looks boring as fuck. Like, no thank you. Then they put out that new trailer, I think it was mm -hmm. earlier this week, and people are like, oh, maybe oh, I will watch it. And all the drama that has now come about between them. Yeah. Um, Should we watch it then? I say we at least so, give it a, let's dip our so toe in actually, and watch maybe the first episode. That actually comes next week, the 20th. Is it really? Yeah. No. Yeah, March twentieth. So. Okay. 
that'll be a good spot for. Yeah, we'll we'll um, at least try it. If we hate it, we can always yeah. stop midway and be like, it wasn't for us. But close from is am I? Oh, I'm watching like I'm on Peacock right now, yeah. and I'm watching um. Like, you know how it just, like, flips through different scenes? Yeah. Fucking Kristen's in it. Yeah. I did not know that. And Kristen boy, Dougie. does she look rough. Listen, COVID was rough on all of us. Not all of us are looking better and slimmer like we were before. Um, She's rough, rough, rough. She was rough to begin with. <laughs> Homegirl showed up wearing flip flops half the time with like a cigarette hanging out of her mouth and two more in her back pocket. Like she's never been that girl. Okay. Yeah. So I'm interested. Very true. Let, let's. Okay. So we'll have a first episode review next we'll podcast. We'll go from there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it depends on how much. We're not I can making tolerate. any promises, but we'll try it. We're adventurous. <laughs> If I can tolerate Brittany's voice. Brittany is the part that makes me hesitant because she can be pretty annoying. Kristen too, for that matter. But I could handle Kristen more than I can Brittany. I, so I saw something. Oh, they talked about in this episode of VPR where they're like, so you remember a couple of episodes ago, I was like, plot twist, Ariana and Tom end up back together. And yeah. somebody in this episode was like, well, Brittany and Jax was able to do it after he cheated on her. They brought it up. And I was like, mark my words, mark my words. I don't believe you. I don't see it. Well, I don't either now. because I, <laughs> the, But after just con- trying to convince me in the world, mark my words. Well, actually, now that I think about it, I, never mind. I don't know. I, you know what? I could see Tom and Ariana doing like revenge sex that like brought the house down. I, I could see like them Mr. like Mr. and Mrs. Smith kind of. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, so you reminded me. So they're doing a crossover episode like they did before with Vanderpump and was it Summer House? Yes, it was Summer House. Like or selling they do the... one of, one of those shows. They did a crossover thing and tried to uh, give us a magic mind trick into watching the first episode. So honestly, we're gonna end up watching it anyways. For what the Valley? Yeah, like the val like it's gonna be Vanderpump blending into the Valley and then the Valley. So it's all one night. So that's next episode. That's, that's the next, next VPR episode. because I they were like because they, they kept showed... teasing that Jax was filming for Vanderpump, and then they were like, no, he's filming for the Valley, but he's with James, but he's and it turns out it was a crossover episode to introduce the Valley. Yeah, they try to pull one over on us like we're not slick. We got your number, bitches. <laughs> but are we gonna watch? Yeah, we're gonna try. I mean, we're gonna... try anything I... once. You know, the thing is, is like if it's watch us good... be like, oh my god, so good. <laughs> Hook, line, and sinker, bitch. Yeah. Here, Bravo. We were so wrong. Give us more. <laughs> Here's our formal formal apology. <laughs> um, speaking of narcissistic individuals mm-hmm. let's talk about 90 day fiance and how that ended okay so where do you want to start talking about narcissistic individuals because there's several <laughs> um let's start do you want to pick back up with gino and jasmine because that's where they pick back up because they kind of yeah. ended it with Jasmine running off and, like, the whole strip club thing. And they, like, Man. picked back up on it. One would thought she was being murdered. <laughs> Bless her heart. You, it was, like, in my mind, I could just close my mind and see, like, the movie screen playing, screen playing in the background. Her just, like, <gasps> I was, like, and the commentary from the other couples, like, Dear God, like, yeah, who's uh, dying? 
somebody getting <laughs> murdered or no somebody said something about like is somebody giving birth like somebody made a really shady comment and i can't remember who it was <laughs> rob was like good god and he like just like yeah <laughs> yeah nikki came to the rescue and got her to come back out and they kept talking to the dancer um I, I but then so they kind of made me is jasmine dramatic is the Pope Catholic, but <laughs> um, they explained it a little further that Gino's last girlfriend worked at a yes. strip club, and that added so much more context to why she was acting a fool. Mm-hmm. So I just, I also think though that her making those accusations, like I, he doesn't love me, he doesn't, um, yeah, he dramatic. doesn't like, he doesn't hug me that way. I'm like. He wasn't hugging her, though. Like, she was, like, grabbing him and, like, yeah. shaking her tits on him and stuff. Like, in Gino's defense, I don't think he did anything wrong. He had a bachelor party, and he went to a strip club, and the strippers did their job. I think he, the only thing he was wrong for was not, like. Being upfront and honest about it. Yes. And yeah. I understand, like, you know, I understand why he may not have been, because the reaction he got. Mm-hmm. Is what he was afraid of, but mm-hmm. I also, I also think that he has very valid points. Like, I struggle wanting to be intimate with her because he because she acts like this, or she says very hateful things. Like, I'll tell you, like, if my husband or even the person I'm dating came to me and was like, my ex was a better fuck than you. Oh, oh I'd be okay. Like, pack your shit right now. Let me let me call you. the motherfucker for you. Yeah, I hope you're happy together. Bye. Where are you sleeping at now tonight? Like, oh yeah, right? it would just it would be so, a whole fucking meltdown. Yeah. Um. But I, they did get it resolved. Resolved enough. Yeah, until and, the whole and, panty thing came about. Somebody leaving their nasty drawers in an envelope. Oh my. On God. their front porch. I. But why the fuck would she think that that's a real person? Like. They're on a reality show. There's psycho people in the world that want to mess with if their lives. We're, if we're being honest, they probably got in a fight. She probably put a pair of her underwear in a in a envelope, typed that up. So you think Jasmine did it? I mean, is it? I think it was bitch? a crazy fan. I think it was a crazy oh. fan wanting to meddle in something they saw on TV, finding out where they lived. Oh, I'm going to drive by and put a weird, sketchy letter in some nasty drawers on their front porch and watch it all unfold on TV. And they got what they wanted. They did. But I also think that the other couples really brought that to light. They were like, she's like, there's a chance that this could be. um, And, you know, one of the fans or it could just be a a crazy ex or something like that. So. Um, I, I'm actually, you know, surprisingly, the other couples, like, really helped manage that situation, yes, I feel did. like. Yes, they And did. I personally did not expect that, but I also, um. It depends on the couples. There's been yeah. very opposite reactions in the past. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. I will be curious to see if there's like anything further from Gino and Jasmine. I mean, he clearly, they clearly so love watch each other. After? Because they're gonna be on it. Or do you want me to just fill you in? When does it go? When does it start? Pretty soon. I think in the next few weeks. Oh, I'll watch it with you. We can continue okay. the ninety day. Yeah, let's let's add it. Oh yes, you should because it includes Big Ed. Who? I know you've seen him in all the memes on the internet. He's like the short guy with no neck. I know you know who I'm talking about. Big Ed? I gotta Google this now. Type in 90 Day Fiance Big Ed. You'll know you've seen him in memes before. But he is crazy and dramatic like Jasmine is. And him and his woman, I think, are going to be unhappily ever after. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know exactly who that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, you should definitely watch. I know, I know who Big Ed is. I've seen him before. That okay. 
And so, so I did, his relationship with his woman is yeah. fucking bananas. Like he is the dramatic one. They're always breaking up, back on, back off, back on. But are <sighs> they? But so how did they get on happily ever after? <laughs> how much time do we have? So how much time do we have? Because I'm, this bitch is American and so is he. Like they did not meet each other the 90 day fiance way. She is the rebound that he got after his 90 day fiance girl and him split. And they just decided to keep following him because he's so dramatic that it was good TV. Is this, is Liz the one? Yep. So according Ed to them, according to this people one month ago, they split. Yeah, it's, it's a day by day. It's Gina <laughs> and Jasmine when they were at their worst. It's the same. Wow. He is the Jasmine. Well, mm, she's dramatic, too. It's hard to tell. They're toxic. They don't belong together, but they make good TV, so. He has his own merch, everything. He oh is my very God. full of himself. He has Sandoval vibes. God, he, just like looking at him gives me toxic vibes. <laughs> he has I'm like. I'm so glad you're part of the 90 Day Fiance world. I'm so yeah, glad because I have nobody we, to talk to about it. <laughs> We need to add um, Happily Ever After to... Okay, for sure. I knew I was so, going to watch it. I just didn't know yeah. you were going to be interested. Let's add that with The Valley and then... And the Bet It All Blonde. Ooh, we got our hands full next week. Yeah, but Bet It All Blonde is, what, just two episodes? So it's two we... parts. We can watch it this weekend. Knock it out. Yeah, and then give our review on it. So mm -hmm. that'll be perfect. Um, so then... I'm so curious. How about you go. I'm just. I was just gonna say. I'm just curious to see. I didn't know they were going to be on it, but I'm curious to see how this all plays out for them. Grab some popcorn. Uh, I know, right? And try to so, keep up. <laughs> God, mighty whiplash. Uh huh. Uh huh. They're a train wreck. But like yeah. I said, they make good TV. So like we keep watching. It's. <sighs> um. Let's switch to Devin and Nick. I kind of want to save Nikki and Justin for last because they kind of took up most of the reunion from the back and forth. They did. So Devin and Nick, because we were so curious to see where they were at. I, okay. So Devin looks amazing. She does. She is skinny. She does. And also, I, thank I, you for giving the white girls some good representation. Yes. Don't and let I this think... bronzer fool you. <laughs> this, is, this is the real me right here. I'm really, I'm really glad to know, like, her mom didn't, like, throw Nick under the bus and mm -hmm. say, oh, well, she lost the weight because he degrades her. I, it was really good that her mom yeah. said her weight fluctuates, her, like, things just mm -hmm. happen. And Devin even said, you know, I put on weight from being in Australia, and, and you know, you don't realize that. So I'm very glad. I'm, I, I I understand like the sentiment bus behind being called Piggy. And you know, obviously that's maybe not something he should have done in public. Oh, he wasn't budging either. He's like, Oh, you don't but, like it? Sorry. <laughs> I mean, and I kind of understand it. Like I I understand like if it's a term of endearment and especially from his culture, but okay. I also think he should have like a level of I guess sentiment towards it, like, hey, this is not really the situation here in America. Right. It can be misconstrued. Yeah. Maybe keep that under wraps. Well, she even admitted. Yeah. At first, it wasn't her favorite. Yeah. She was like, yeah, like it's not the best nickname. But I think over time, she learned that he, it wasn't malicious. It wasn't like yeah. he did mean it as a you're cute, almost like pinch your cheeks kind of cute mm -hmm. nickname. And so maybe she just learned, like, this is not a battle I'm going to keep fighting. And I'm going to just yeah. let him do that because he's good to me and we love each other. Yeah. And I'm sure there was probably a big fight about it. And he was oh, like, guaranteed in, in my in the culture. Beginning. Yeah. In my culture, this is, like, how yeah. I mean it. Like, and I, I mean, I've been called nicknames before that I was not happy with in the beginning. But 
Not much. I mean, I call Stella my little sweet potato, and I call Bernard my little chicken nugget, and they are neither of those things. That's just my yeah. nicknames that I have yeah. for them. So, like, I get yeah. it. Like, if there's nothing behind it, it's just a name. And they're happy. What do you, so. What do you think about them living apart? I think, so I understand, like, he, they got married, he got his, was it a green card? He got his, well, he. Or his work visa or something. Yeah, it's so. Something along those lines where he could work. So he found what he needed to do is in Atlanta, I think, doing his job. Yeah, yeah. So I think for right now, they're good with it because they lived apart before. So really, like, yeah, they're married, but, like, they, they kind of are used to that. And she is clearly very introverted and Mm -hmm. um, is good on her own. And she's got a supportive family. So if it works for them, it works for them. I feel like if it was anybody, like Gino and Jasmine could never. Oh, God, no. But it works for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it's temporary and I I feel good about them. I will say there seemed to be like unspoken strain between them. Like they seemed okay. but I just... I feel like there was, and maybe I just read into it too much, but they just seemed like everything's fine, but then they didn't really allude to anything. I don't, I don't know. Maybe they were trying to hold their cards close to their chest. Yeah. Like we're not going to elaborate. We're here to get our paycheck and go home. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I could see that. I I guess I'm just rooting for them. Absolutely. I I I think that they're adorable. I think they're, I I think they're really good with each other. If we're being I honest, agree. so yeah. you know, in in any relationship, especially one that is rushed as quick to get married, mm-hmm. I think there's there's things that you miss in your blind spots where yeah. you don't get to address them officially. And I think after you're married and that pressure is off, you then really get to explore the relationship and 100%. you learn, you start learning so much. I mean, I mean, I can, I can think back to when Andrew and I started dating, like we all the fucking blind spots, but now, you know, when we really start being together and like living together, like, you yeah. fucking breathe too loud or <laughs> you know there, there's yeah. things you, you know there's things each that, other you learn to pick exactly. up on the social cues that each other only knows about each other like yeah exactly. you, you you form that that yeah. bond you can only form by living together or getting married yeah for sure but speaking of faking not faking it that's not the right word like you said a slight disconnect but not alluding or saying anything about it that's kind of what I got from Clayton and Annalie a little bit but they even said like you're not very like the PDA part of it I think she's I think she's just a private person and I think he's just awkward and I think when you put those two together I mean they seem happy they seem to take up for each other like Mm -hmm. he was like going hard for her towards Brandy and she was like, she was fighting. I feel like she, they were on the same page and they were very, I guess, they seem very solid together. I they don't so. need people. At this point. Yeah. I mean, so but. Brandy. But I also, part of, me, part of me understands. Oh, my God. She was a witch. No, Kathy's a witch. Brandy wishes she was a witch. <laughs> I just think that um, I I understand slightly why Anna Lee did not tell her dad. Mm-hmm. Now that like now that it's unfolded and how he's acted, I understand. And she was it her or somebody else made the comment that was like, I think Jasmine said. Latin American pe- families are crazy and they're very protective. And, and then family Manuel is first above everything. One, yes. And yeah. Manuel backed it up. Mm-hmm. And then the statement that they shared from her dad, like, I understand. 
I just don't understand the over overprotectiveness, but I understand why she made the choices she made. And if she, that's choices she was willing to make for Clayton, then regardless of like the things we saw, she's definitely, I feel like she's ride or die. I feel like she is now that they're married. I think yes. making the decision, is she going to get married or not? Was very different, but I feel like now yeah. that she's over that hurdle, like, they mm -hmm. are married. There's no more will she, won't she. I feel like that pressure yeah. is off, and maybe she can be more herself. Her true I found self, it, anyway. Yeah, and I found it interesting that she, like, the original plan was for him to go and live with her. Mm -hmm. I found that interesting. And then, you know, she probably, she realized that he made fairly good money. She, you know, I, I get it. Um, I'm, I'm really glad that they're in a place where they're, they're, they have each other's back. It in a much like. better place than they were. Yes. 30 minutes after she was supposed <laughs> to walk down the aisle. I know, right? Because <laughs> that was stressful. It, oh my it God. Was. And TLC was like, we're going to cut it off here so that the next episode, like. Fucking TLC playing with my emotions like that. Yeah. I don't appreciate it. Yet I keep watching, and yet here we are talking about it. <laughs> so yeah. you're doing something right. Um, but yeah, so Daddy is clearly still pissed. Mm -hmm. But again, as he should be, you know, the way she handled it, and with family being so strong of a bond like they have with that culture, understandable. Mm -hmm. But I love that even though he didn't come, he still made the statement. Yeah. So it was a very like stern but loving way. It was very father esque. Yes. I guess. Very. Yeah. Um. What else did I write down about them? Um. Oh yeah, they moved out on their own, without mommy. Yes. I. So. Let's. Let's talk about that for a minute about mommy in the closet because God, they dragged him about putting mommy in the closet. But I understand his logic. But no, I get it. Here's the thing. She could have slept on the couch. She, and he even said earlier in the season, she made the choice to be in the closet. The closet wasn't small. Like It was, was a walk-in closet. I mean, you sure. saw our closet. Somebody could sleep in there. The like, closet is so much bigger than the one she was in. Are you joking? You so? Yeah. Yours is a small bedroom. Okay, so here's the thing. You've got a there, nice closet. Her closet was like my master bedroom closet. Enough for a mattress, a, a twin mattress, and maybe a little reading lamp. I will, I'll tell you this. So in 2011, maybe 2012, I just out of my, my horrible relationship mm -hmm. and... I needed somewhere to stay. And at the time, my best friend, her neighbor, was renting a room. Emphasis on room. Was it a closet? It was the mud room to her back door. Was it like concrete floor? No, it was... Like, was it like fully finished at least, but still the mud room? Yeah, there there was um it was hardwood floors. I had a window and the, I had my own, my own entrance. I paid three hundred dollars a month for this room. Was this California? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I did not. I didn't have anywhere else to go, and I could only no, afford. I, times are hard. You did what you had to do. And my, I had like this little fold out fold out mattress thing that it, if you folded it back up it was like a chair it was like an organami and that's what i slept on oh yeah so how long did, how long did you sleep there like how long did you do that for um i think i did that for about six months seven months because then really that long Oh, I yeah. mean, you had to do what you had to do. It's just, yeah, man, that's a long but time. I was also, I was within walking distance to my job living yeah. there. 
And then, but then it paid off because then I got a, I got an apartment with my best friend at that time yeah. and I had my own room, you know? And so, but you way up. yeah, so I understand like doing what you have to do. And as an individual, like his mom probably was like, I'm very grateful. I'm probably, you know, yeah. I, and I understand, like, I understand looking in on the situation, like, holy shit, like, you put your mom in the closet, but also, he has a very valid point. She did things that put her in the position where she needs somewhere to stay. Because I guarantee you, they said, we could move into a two-bedroom, can you afford half? And she said, no. Yeah. Like, because it's more money. So, Mm -hmm. he's like, all right, it's either the couch, or like, she chose the closet, it was just she funny did. to watch people's reactions, especially yeah. Manuel. It was like, you put your mom in the closet? And he was like, you put your guinea pigs in the closet. You put your mom in the living room. Yeah. And he was like, but there's no air in there. And then they were like, I mean, oh, they were like. They were like, what the? So your mom doesn't need air? I was dying. I yeah. was dying. But he, I think he defended himself very he, well. So he, he did. He did. Um, And. You know, I really feel like he, as an individual, has come into his own. And yeah. I th- obviously p- because of Anna Lee. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Good on you, Clayton. I'm glad he got his fairy tale ending. He got his woman. Mm-hmm. He still has his guinea pigs. And they yep. moved out on their own without mommy in the closet. So, like. But she's close. That. She's close, but she's not closet close. I just, I'd be curious to know what her full story is. I would love to know some of that story, yeah. Yeah, and I'm I'm wondering if How did there's... Get here? Yeah. I, I, if I had to guess, I, I would say potentially, like, gambling or something. Because she didn't seem like she had, like, a, a, an addiction or anything, like, no, drug abuse. No, she just or... seems like maybe somebody that doesn't budget her very possible very well. Or... Yeah. Ended up in a lot of debt. Hey, we're all guilty of it. I know you've been there. I've been there. (laughs) Debt happens to the best of us. But I feel like maybe that was her situation somehow. Or like her credit wasn't good. So she had to move in with somebody who already had a place. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Who do you want to go to next? Sam and Citra. Okay. Dying to know what you think about this whole Uber driver cheating situation. Okay, in his defense, and this, this before is the they got married, thing, and they were just started talking, and they were in a online relationship. I will say that. I mean, but I also he's wrong for the cheating portion of it. Like one hundred percent. Like if you're going to, regardless if like you're in online or like cheating whatever cheating. stage, yeah. absolutely. But I also I have I understand his logic, but the way he either Citro was trying to play like no he never did and like leaving it at that so it never came to mm-hmm. light. Or he lied about it and she just found out about it. What do you think? I personally think she was trying to cover for him. And I think. That's a very good point. I think part of that is because she did not want her family knowing about it. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Because, Because of the religion side of it. Yeah. Because of how protected her dad is, mm-hmm. and then all this stuff very that, good point. that like to me that Wilds, because he was he seemed very adamant. Like I had told you, I had told you, and he I did. think he seemed very like I swear I told you. So yeah. you're right. I bet that's what it was. And good for her trying to protect her and him, mm-hmm. and like just trying to move past it. But I also come on, Sam. <laughs> Hey, okay, so let's give him some credit. The biggest, most important part of this whole thing was we needed to know where he stood with the whole, Mm -hmm. what was it called? Diversion. The diversion. Obviously, the judge ruled in his favor. Absolutely. He's back in the program for another year, and he's on Mm -hmm. his best behavior, and I'm proud of him, and I'm happy for him. Oh, yeah. For both of them. And I think 
I think they're genuinely happy. I think they're genuinely. I think so. Um, and she's they're really, Yes. Um, I I loved how Citra dealt with when they asked, like, how do you feel about this information? She was like, Sam's a, be- a good person. Mm-hmm. Sam has worked really hard to be who he is. Sam is taking care of us. Like, they clearly have a very strong relationship mm-hmm. and very, and I love um, it. yeah. So she's very, I like, th- focused on where he's at now, <clears throat> not what he's done in his past. And she didn't drag him for it. Like, Mm -mm. can't say much about these other bitches. (laughs) Right. But, you know, and I'm sure, I'm sure it was an argument. I'm sure it was, you know, something, but Mm -hmm. for them to move forward. And I think, you know, I'm here for it. Yeah. Um, I saw, I think you sent it to me where they, did you see where they went back to Indonesia and surprised her dad? No, I sent you the gender reveal for her baby. I there was something else. I it's on their TikTok. Yeah, they, their TikToks keep popping up for me. Yeah, I guess my TikTok algorithm. China has learned that all I care about is social media and cute animals, or not social media, <laughs> uh, reality TV. And cute yeah. Animals. So I keep getting like a lot of their TikToks. I am. Um, I subscribed to them. I finally was Did like, you? I started seeing it after I watched the one you sit, and yeah. I was just like, I might as well just subscribe. So <laughs> subscribe. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm super happy for them. I'm glad that he's in a good place. She seems to be in a great place. Like, I am mm-hmm. really wishing that they were on the Happily Ever After. Yes. I'm really upset that they were not. Like, Red Rover, Red Rover, we'll trade you Rob and Sophie <laughs> for, for Sam and Citra. Uh, because I don't give a fuck about their Happily Ever After. Bye. <laughs> I want to know about I, Sam and Citra. Yeah. I'm yeah, still I watch. agree. <laughs> oh yeah, especially with Gino and Jasmine being on there. How <laughs> yeah. many couples is it? Um, they usually do like five, something like that. It's like it's kind of like the same as Ninety Day Fiance. They kind of do several couples. Okay. Um, we know for sure Robin, Sophie, ugh. Ashley, and Manuel. Eh. I don't think I realized that. You didn't know that? They're going to be on the no. new season. Um, and then Big Ed and Liz and some I other have, people. I have to say, Ra, um, Ashley Manuel was kind of like back and forth for me throughout the season. Like, I sometimes enjoyed it, sometimes I didn't. But how they ended this, the reunion, and like how... He seems to have grown so much, and so has she. I think they both have, yeah. I'm actually interested seeing, like, how they end up. Like, do they have great babies? Do they? Your wish is granted. You get to find out. I know. (laughs) Now you're like, I'm extra excited. (laughs) Yeah. So. All right. Um, And that's really it other than Nikki and Justin or Igor. I, I don't know where the fuck they're like, what, what are your final thoughts? Cause even the reunion itself, I think they broke up and got back together like four times. Oh yeah. So just in the reunion. I, okay. So we've said a lot of stuff about Nikki since this season came on, on our podcast. Mm-hmm. We were very team Justin or Igor at first. Yes, but I also, so this episode really kind of like put some things into perspective for me. Mm -hmm. And it came really from Ashley because Ashley was like, why do you keep saying she needs to act like a woman, act like a woman? And here's the thing. She's trans. Who the fuck cares? Mm -hmm. She lives her life as a woman. But if you as an as a cis woman, meaning like a woman that was born like me is is a masculine woman. Would you say act like a woman to that mass woman? It depends. Some people would. Maybe. I but see, I don't think that he was saying it. 
because he was saying it because she used to be a man. He was saying it was like, you need to be a woman. You need to be a woman. So you're saying he, he was trying to say, if you're going to choose to be a woman, you need to act. If you're going to be a and lady, be submissive and be, and be submissive yeah. and be, don't argue with me, be respectful. Yeah. Those traditional conservative male, female roles. Yes. Right. I, okay. and that's how I, that when, which we when, picked up on over the season. Yes. And, but he really drove it home during the reunion. And here's my thing is I'm I've probably been guilty of being like, yeah, she needs to be more feminine. There's nothing wrong with whatever she wants to be with. She's a big personality. He's known she that from is. day one. Yes, for sure. And whether she is a masculine woman or a feminine woman, whatever she is, that big personality, anybody is, is going to take a, a back seat to that, and I don't think he can deal with that back seat. No, no he cannot. So and that's I mean, why, because that's the reason they don't work. Be, and because look at Jasmine and Gino. Gino takes back seat to Jasmine because she is a feminine woman with a big personality. So he is the they call him. I've learned, you know, uh, lingo nowadays. He's a golden retriever boy. Have you seen that? <laughs> No, but that's so it's all about these girls that find their golden retriever boys because like you usually end up with like the fuck boy who's like I make the decisions I wear the pants but like the girls who have the big personalities and fuck everyone I do what I want end up with yeah. the golden retriever boys who are like whatever you want sweetie that is Gino because that's that's a golden retriever like let me just make yeah. your life better exactly yeah. I'm here to yeah. be cute and love you and tell you you're pretty <laughs> that's funny I yeah. just I so and, you know, she needs that, and that is not does. Igor. No, and and you know, and I think I think from her perspective, I think she's still hanging on to him because mm -hmm. when they're good, they're good. But he does not respect her on any level for her journey, and and you know, and, and a lot could be said because of how he found out. I'm not. Yeah, there's there's a uh, fault on both sides. Yeah, things I'm, could have been handled better. Things could have, mm -hmm. you know. I don't want to discount his feelings, right? But if he genuinely wanted to be with her and and move forward, he would learn how to treat her, talk to her. He would learn how to work through things. Like in his mind, it's not. Like in his mind, he just looks at her as a man in a dress, as how yeah. I feel that he looks mm -hmm. at her, not as a woman. He doesn't see her as a woman with a big personality. He sees Correct. her as a trans woman with masculine energy or man vibes, I think is what he called it. I, yeah. And, and the way he was talking to other, to the other cast, like, oh my God, insulting Ashley, Ashley. about her candles. Or um, you you need to show some respect. Like, who are you, dude? You didn't you didn't even like. No offense, but you couldn't even make it to the states. Like, <laughs> you're the only one here on a camera, bro. Like, so maybe maybe settle your camera down. But no, you're absolutely right. Like, just because whatever body you're in, and if you are change that over time or whatever, your personality is your personality. Mm -hmm. Like, there are men with masculine energies, there's females with masculine energies, and whatever, the whole spectrum. But he clearly is not a good match for her. I mm -mm. think they just both struggle with letting go because they have so much history. Absolutely. And and there could be a lot to say about that. I, and hate very possibly if, if they, if he would, and I'd say he... It needs to start with him. He needs to get therapy to work through his emotions mm -hmm. with 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 the fact that he found out she is trans. Because, I mean, he even said it. He's like, if I didn't know she was trans, I would have never known. So clearly, Correct. you know, so clearly she's had very good work done and very mm -hmm. good transition. So mm -hmm. um, I just, I think that, 
the therapy needs to start with him. I think they need to, if they're going to make it work, they need to be in therapy. Mm -hmm. Um, But I also, I think she deserves better. And I think in a roundabout way, he deserves better than what they deserve to, than what they can give each other together. If that makes sense. They both need and want different than what each other can give. Exactly. So they need to move on. It's just, I can understand why that would be so hard. I mean. You feel like it's a lot of time wasted. I I did find it very interesting that they called him out for the payday. Like the benefits that she provided him. Because I made that comment. That's a whole other side of it that just. I think, and I think that potentially that's why he just, he like. Goes back and forth. Goes back and forth. I don't want to be with her, but oh my god, I need my car fixed. Well, let yeah. me, you know, and yeah, and that's unfortunate. That's toxic. So yeah, yeah. So, um, well, let me tell you what you talk about. Somebody being a hype man and being in your corner and a ride or die is Nikki's mom. Oh yeah. I wish everyone had a mom like Nikki's mom because she was like, fuck anybody who tells my daughter anything different than what she is. And whatever she says goes like, I just loved her mom and loved their relationship. Well, they're, they alluded a little bit to their, to their story Mm -hmm. from when Nikki realized she, when, when she was a boy, when that transition, her mom struggled with it. A little bit, yeah. And I mean, and let's let's be real; it's natural for any parent. I think to, a lot of parents go through that because it's almost yeah. like you're losing what you knew before. You're not, but it's 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 difficult to adjust to, I would assume. So, I think for like the conversation my mom and I had when I came out to her, mm-hmm. part you know part of it, and I think the same kind of conversation applies here. Is as a parent, I have this idea of how you should live your life and how I think, like, how what you were born as, yeah, what society, yeah, yeah, exactly. But I support you in what you're going to do, but just know your life is going to be harder. And I think having a parent see that your life is going to be harder because of who you are and how society is mm-hmm. not going to potentially accept you. I think it's where a lot of that struggle comes from for a lot of accepting I parents. I see that. Yeah. Cause so, that would be a lot of anger, a lot of heartbreak. Like, mm-hmm. but let me I tell mean, you, she's still fighting for her daughter today. Oh yeah. Like fuck anybody who comes my way. Like, she would take a bullet for her daughter. So I just, I love that. I wish every parent was like that. I mean, I think most anybody in that that room would have would was like Team Nikki all yeah, the way. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. Um, so but yeah, Ashley. At one point, I was like, "Wait, who's the host of this show? Is it Sean or Ashley?" <laughs> okay. Because Ashley was taken over with the question. She, she was. Like, I think Sean at one point set her cards down and just sat back and watched because, like, she didn't have to do anything. Ashley was yeah. taken over. She's like, "Let me collect this paycheck." <laughs> she said, "I got my own questions. Let me get my cards out." <laughs> Um, Sean annoys me. I like do Sean? not know. I don't like the way her. Is it? I don't know what it is. Her and it might be because. Well, I think it might be because she she allows time for translation. Maybe before she like it. Yeah. She just seems very structured and very. Yeah. And. What is it Tom and Eater, Joe did? Eater. Eater, Eater. Eater. I just feel like she's very structured in the way that she, and there was yeah. borderline no personality behind the questions. It was like, so what color is your hair? So, no, and I think you're saying that because you're used to Andy Cohen, which Where Andy has he, his questions, but he will you know, whip his head around or he'll interject and be yeah. like, shut up. Like when they start yeah. yelling at each other, like Sean will never, she might be I like, guys, that. guys, guys, Simmer down. she Simmer is down. more, yeah, she's more professional and like doing her job and staying in her bubble. Whereas Andy has a bubble, but like he also prances around the outside yeah. of it. But I still I like mean, her. I think she does a really good, she does her job. 
I think she's good for this show, if we're being yeah. honest. So they've got enough personalities, they don't need another one. Oh, very true. I guess the same could be said about Housewives, but, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm still floored at how Igor acted and some of the things he said. And I, I, yeah. under, I, I think, and my final thought on this was when he texted her saying that he could not be with somebody that was trans and he didn't want that in his life, that should have been it for both of them. That, I would have, yeah. Because that's like, that's like, hypothetically. It's saying that's you're not like, good enough, but on something that you cannot and should not change. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like at this point, like, Nikki can't, I mean, she could transition back. Like, like she could, could transition. Could she? Yeah, but she, that's what I'm saying. She shouldn't have to. This is who she, she doesn't is. want to. That's not who, She doesn't like, want to. So, either yeah. get with the program or pack your shit. But see, he absolutely would not be with boy Nikki. Mm-mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, nope, would not. Like, he needs to move the fuck on. I agree. Let Nikki find her golden retriever yes. boy that will kiss the ground she walks on and carry her little poofy uh, train behind her dress for her, hold the mirror while she fixes her lipstick. Mm-hmm. You know, he, she, that's what she needs. And I hope she finds it. I love how much we flip flop mm. since. Yeah. The first couple episodes with them. Because at because, first we were like, Nikki, calm the fuck down. But now that we've learned their dynamics and their story, it's like, oh, just I th- And I, I think that um, editing had a lot to do with that. I agree. Um, after Nikki spoke. To, I'm seeing if they're, they're back together, if there's any update on that. What day of the week is it? I know, right? Well, it says as of March. Are you trying to become part of the podcast? Mm -hmm. Hi, Miss Stella. Say hi to Uncle Jerry. Say hi. (laughs) (laughs) She's ready for her close-up. Not before season 10 tower, which are... And she thought they had made up because... Okay, so they... Well, during the reunion, he... She had a ring on again. Yeah, but then she gave it to her mom and was like, take this yes. fucking ring. So, um, I don't know. I They'll pop back up. Guarantee it. They didn't even make it to the visa. They're going to pop back up. They're going to be either on the next season or they're going to be on uh, before the 90 days or Ooh, something. Yeah. We're not done with them. TLC knows what they're doing, and we're not done with oh, them. Oh, yeah. So we'll find out. I'm now down, like, this rabbit hole about everybody. Like, you and if, your rabbit still, I know. They're a nice little cozy place to be. <laughs> so, like you said, next week, so we are losing Love is Blind. The Traders is over. Uh, Beverly Hills is over, and 90 Day Fiance yep. is over. But we're going to watch... Blonde, uh, bet it bet all it on blonde. blonde. But that'll just be this week. Uh, the Valley. Yes, that comes and out first. And whenever Dang. the Happily Ever After comes out, I know it's soon. I just can't remember the the date. But we're gonna we're gonna watch that too. Yeah, I think adding those will be a good. I think until um, I think I told you. So in June, well, one of the new um, We've got franchises. We've something in May. Well, yeah, and one of them comes. So two franchises come back, one in April and one in May. So I mm-hmm. think, um, I think it was Orange County. Oh, New Jersey. No, yeah, New Jersey. Difference there. Um, New Jersey comes back in May, I believe. May, I think, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I think I'm about pettied out. What about Ooh, you? I'm pettied out. I'm pettied out. I'm out of wine. I know. I've uh, been out of. I've been out of my little. Yeah, concoction. I usually refill it, but I was like, no, I'm gonna be a good girl tonight. <laughs> um, next weekend, you're coming down here, so I'm excited for that. So excited. I know. Um, I hope. I hope we're part of crowd work. I'm so. Oh my gosh, I'm, me too. Um. But then we have dinner and drinks afterwards, so I'm excited for that. Um, for just the whole day, the whole weekend, everything. Yes, and the pancake house. <gasps> Forgot all about it. 
I'm going to be living my best fucking life next weekend. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, I'm petty doubt. Yeah. Thanks for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, then hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And to our audio listeners, be sure to hit follow and leave us a review. Five stars only. <laughs> Uh, You can also follow us on social media, including Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. So until next time, stay petty, guys. Stay petty. Bye. Bye.